Hi guys, we welcome you all to the prep session on PL 300. So we are waiting for a few more participants to join in. So we will start this session by 10 10 a.m. Please note we will start the session by 10 10. Till then, please be patient with us. Thank you. Also, I request all to please be on mute. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, Chetari, will there be any alternate timings, uh, any postponements if the target audience have been not reached in this call? Sorry. Will be there any alternate session if this session is not mm -hmm. uh, like uh, not up to the mark in the terms of audience? Audience as in? So if there are less audience, is there any possibility of canceling this session? Uh, no, 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 we will not cancel the session. Okay, okay, I request all to please be on mute, please. If you have any questions or doubt, you can ask in the chat box.
Okay, so let's start with the session. Hello and good morning to all. Uh, we welcome to the we welcome you all to the session on PL 300 certification. Let's start with the introduction about today's session. Before that, let me give you all a small intro about our today's event sponsor Synergetics. Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company which help any industry to get their relevant technology solution and helps to be on the top of the competition. We are not only restricted to the group trainings, but also our Microsoft certification trainings helps every individual professional to succeed in the competitive world. Here are some of the master solution offered by Synergetics, onboarding solution, reskilling solution, certification, certification plus add-on, cloud adoption, architecting, practice playbook, latest technology training and emerging technology training. Today's session is organized by ATC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in Microsoft cloud technologies. You just need to follow our meetup groups, which are Emerging Technology Community for all, Azure Tech Community Pune for Pune Kurs, Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur Kurs, Azure Tech Community Gujarat for Gujarati Tech, and AI on Microsoft Platform Community for AI groups. You just need to install the meetup app on your phone and follow our communities so you will get the updates regarding our upcoming events, meetups, webinars and workshops. Now small code of conduct which you all need to follow. Please note that you cannot take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. If you need the recording then simply subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will drop the YouTube channel link for you all in the chat box. Next. Here you can see the session flow for today's session. Timings are mentioned below. So first break time will be at 11.30. It will be 15 minutes break where we will be taking MOC activation. Then we have lunch break at 1.30. It will continue till 2.30, one hour lunch break. Then we will wind up by four. Go ahead with the yes. Now today's session for the session. Uh, today's speaker for the session is Mr. Kirti Prajapati. Kirti sir has 16 plus years of experience in designing, developing, deployment and administrator of Microsoft 365 and more. He is Microsoft MVP and Microsoft certified trainer. Go ahead. Agenda for the session. In this session, participants will get to learn importance of the certification and more. Now special announcement to do. We are providing free MOC Microsoft official courseware for PL 300 on your register mail ID. For your understanding, MOC is an important study material for the exam preparation. So if you want to claim the free PL 300 MOC Microsoft official course, do fill out the MOC activation form. Link will be provided to you in the chat box. I repeat, if you want to claim the free MOC for PL 300, you need to fill out the MOC activation form. Link will be provided to you in the chat box later. Also, we are providing exam voucher on discounted rate for PL 300. That is for 3100. For further inf information, interested participants can drop us a mail on info at synergetics india.com. Again, the email ID will be provided to you in the chat box. Now you can grow professionally by adding the latest technology skills with Microsoft various certification. You can enroll for any of this training with synergetics where you will experience live interactive session with the best industry MCTs. 
trust us and will deliver the best. Go ahead. Yeah, the fundamental courses you can see here. Go ahead. The advanced courses. We have next upcoming cert ready webinar, which is on SC 300. Will conducted uh, conduct it on 24th of September, uh, which is full day session 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The registration link will be provided to you in the chat box. So you can register yourself through that. Follow us on our social media pages for updates regarding to the upcoming sessions and webinars. Now I would like to hand over the mic to Kirtisa so he can proceed ahead with the session. Thank you to all once again. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Chaitali. Uh, can you just allow me to share my screen? Yeah, yeah, you can. That option is disabled for me. You have like enable allow me to share the screen. Just a minute, sir. Just a minute. Let me know if you can see the screen. Just opening your PPT. Yeah, yeah, your screen is visible now. OK, fine. OK, yeah, thanks. Thanks, uh, Chaitali, for a brief introduction about the Synergetic and the services we are providing in terms of uh, clearing the certification with all type of options available, Azure, Data Platform, and Microsoft 365. So uh, thank you once again and uh, good morning everyone and thank you for having me for today's session on PL300. And uh, I'm more than happy to help you in getting this certification clear going forward if whosoever is interested. And as I and Saital, you already explained about me, so just wanted to add a few more things on that. I am an MVP and MCT and uh, helping this uh, the people who are willing to like uh, clear the certification exams and uh, to be in more depth for each and every technology uh, in Microsoft. And for today, uh, we are going to talk about PL300 and uh, in that I will try to uh, explain as much as I can uh, because this is a, an introductory session and you will come to know that what it comes, uh, what it covers in uh, PL300. And what type of role you will be having once you are uh, appearing for this exam or uh, looking out for uh, clearing this uh, exam certification. So this is basically for the data analysis uh, role and where you can do certain type of things like uh, you can deliver X enable uh, insights by leveraging available data. Whatever the data you have with different type of domains and you can just collect those data and you can have something to represent uh, with the organization or you can get something as a decision making information. And in that you also have to collaborate with different stakeholders uh, uh, within the company re regardless to different verticals. And you also have to identify such business requirements which can fit into this uh, data transformation and uh, uh, creating the models and then representing a concrete information to the uh, management or, or the person or the team who are looking out for. So there you have to uh, clean some data because we have the raw data initially and then you have to uh, transform the data in a proper way that that can explain something to the user. So that capability you will be uh, having uh, in this. And as a data analyst, you are also responsible for designing and building data models. So main part is data model. Whenever you have the raw data, 
uh, it is scattered somewhere and you have to collect it. You have to clean it and you have to transform or uh, create a data model in a way that can help you to extract such information which is required for actual decision making or uh, having a forecasting information for the organization. So for that, you can just uh, build some data models based on that. You can create some reports and you can create some dashboards. Dashboards a collection of reports and some other component that can give you kind of overall visualization where you are and where will be you are uh, going forward if you are taking some decision based on the data you are looking out as of now. And that all will be done uh, using Power BI. And you also uh, have kind of proficient using uh, proficiency using Power Query and writing expressions by using DAX. So this is a kind of uh, we have two interfaces. One where you can write your query to pull the data, actual data you are looking for, and other DAX is a kind of a kind of programming language. Like you can, if you want to write like an if else condition, then you can use those kind of expressions by using this. So as a data analyst, you will have this kind of uh, uh, responsibilities to perform whenever it comes to this PL 300 exam. And then about this course, like uh, uh, in this course, uh, once you are like, there are some prerequisites whenever you are trying to appear for some examination or uh, any any course. So for this course, we should have uh, some prerequisites, but not limited to this. If do if you don't know anything, that is fine. We we can also cover up before the before you appearing for the exam. So to be successful data analyst, start this role with experience with data visualization products. Like for example, uh, if you have some data and then you have a kind of experience, like how you want to visualize the data or how you want to represent the data and uh, how you are going to use uh, such services uh, like Power BI. So just to model the data and transform into a way that user will be easily understand. OK, this is what this data is uh, telling about or uh, such information is sharing with the users. And then you also uh, have some kind of knowledge of uh, data sources like your data could be on premises on premises in the in the sense any file will be uh, from your any folder physical folder or the data will be available on cloud based data repository. That is, for example, uh, OneDrive for business or any other uh, uh, SharePoint document library and you are pulling something from there. So you should have the understanding of the different set of uh, locations from where you can uh, pull the data, pull the files or the, uh, the data source information. And a fundamental understanding of Azure data services. So uh, these are three requirements, prerequisites uh, you should know about when you are trying to appear for this exam or uh, trying to understand how the PL 300 will work. And <clears throat> objective of this uh, session is like uh, first you will be able to identify and retrieve data from data sources. The data sources could be anything and understand uh, the different connections method. Like, for example, as I said, uh, if you want to collect data from your on premises, from your laptop or your from your uh, physical files system, then you have to understand what connection I have to make to collect the data. So that uh, one information uh, you should have that. And then you should optimize the query performance. So it may happen that uh, your data set might have thousands of records and you're just using select star from kind of query. So it will take some time to pull out the data and represent as a result. So you should be aware with like how to optimize those query performance, which can enhance the productivity of the development as well as the uh, giving the proper information or real time information uh, in the visualization. And then you will be uh, having understanding of profile and examining the data and apply the data shape transformation. So you'll be able to understand how to collect the data, how to transform the data in a different manner, and then you can pass that data to any visualization controls. Then you can also develop a scalable and performance data model like we have kind of uh, 
either you can use single data set or you can single data source or table or you can just uh, create a kind of normalization between n number of tables and just pull out the data in a collective way so that data model uh, you can also uh, have a kind of uh, uh, understanding on that too and if you want to enhance the data model with DAX, so we can use the measure, then calculated columns and tables. So these are other options. And you can also use variables and some kind of aggregations where you will be able to optimize your model and that will help you to uh, increase the performance while it is trying to query the data and pooling the data. And based on that, you can also design and create reports along with the dashboard. So we, I'll, I'll show you in the demo part where uh, we'll have that information, like from where to pick the data, how you can create the charts and different uh, uh, information uh, available for the data and different set of uh, visualization you can go with that. And you can also, uh, as it is not limited to use a certain set of visualizations, but uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, commands available, uh, controls available, which can be utilized to represent the data in a different format or a different way. So user can easily get the idea like how the data uh, comes in and what will be the uh, decision after looking into this data. And then you can also create and manage your work. Sorry, uh, then you can perform the advanced analytics. So once you have the visualizations available with you, then based on that, you can uh, analyze, analyze the data visualization. Then based on that, you can also perform some kind of advanced tricks that, that can help you to take any decision. And then uh, uh, you can create this workspace where all the reports, whatever the reports you are working, all the reports will be available in workspace. So I will explain you in the demo, like how to create the workspace, how to publish the reports uh, in specific workspace. So uh, that will be really able to understand and uh, how you can manage your data sets and how frequently you are going to rephrase that. So that is related to um, the report which you have created in your local system. And now you have published that into your workspace. And from there, how you are going to manage those data sets along with the rephrase. Right, so it may happen that you have you are creating one record at 10:30 a.m. now, and you are publishing the report. So we have the data till 10:30 uh, in the data set as a uh, like a caching data kind of. Now someone is creating the record at 10:40 a.m. So our report may have to refresh. Uh, we report get the actual data from the data set. So we have to kind of create a scheduled refresh or incremental refresh, which can allow us to get the real time data, whatever available in the data set. And your data set will eventually point to your tables from where it is getting the data uh, using the query, whatever the query we have uh, implemented in the uh, Power BI desktop. So I will explain this whole scenario when we talk about uh, the interface, how the Power BI desktop can be used and uh, uh, create some table, create some charts and publish it and create into works, uh, create workspace, upload into workspace and then refresh the data set and uh, how your data will be available uh, on time to all the users. And along with that, uh, that uh, the request this, Security also comes into the picture, so you can also apply the role level security. So based on the security, uh, the people have certain kind of uh, access or privileges to uh, review the data. They can have more information <clears throat> from security. So security is also part of this kind of uh, certification or uh, any kind of uh, reports or data, data uh, this data set or data collected from some some tables so you can also apply some kind of securities so these are the objectives that you will be able to understand the basics of all of this uh, after this session and uh, if you talk about certification area then uh, these are the uh, certification area uh, with the weightage of some percentage so uh, you can see that uh, the first percentage 
So like different set of percentage weightage available for each and every uh, category. So preparing the data is in between 15 to 20 percent. And after preparing the data, you have to model the data. So that comes with, within the range of 30 to 35. And after modeling the data, you have to represent in some way that can be a kind of proper visualization. And based on that, uh, someone can analyze, OK, something is happening. We have to like take the decision on this uh, 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 data or some product or something like that. And then you can deploy and maintain your deliverables, like how you can deploy those uh, reports once the visualization is ready and it should be available for end users to access the report. And then you can deploy it, how to maintain it, like maintain in the sense, upload or publish into the workspace and then uh, how frequently you are going to refresh the data. So user will, end user will have the, all the uh, up and uh, real-time information or real-time data they can access. So these are the weightage uh, you can consider when talking about this uh, PL300 examination. So you have to be like, uh, uh, be aware that, okay, if I'm talking about the preparing the data, then this will, have a weightage of 15 to 20 percent in the examinations, right? So you can see the higher the percentage, the more questions you are likely to see in that area. So if whenever you are appearing for the exam, so you will be having more questions on the model, the data, because we have the higher weightage in terms of the percentage for that uh, certification area, uh, sorry, uh, for that category for this PL300. So make sure that you are aware with the weightage as well as the the importance of that part, like where we are having more questions and where we are having less questions. So uh, this is all about this introduction part of the this PL300 overview, where you will be able to see some kind of uh, understand some kind of objectives, prerequisites, and the weightage of the certification. Okay. Now let's get started with uh, Microsoft uh, data analytics. So in this, we'll mostly try to cover how to analyze the data and then we will see how getting started with Power BI. So first, uh, whenever you see uh, data and information is the most strategic business assets. So if you have the data and information available with you, then that will give you like of whatever you want from that data, like how you want to model it, how to visualize it with for end users. So as a data analyst, you are on a journey, right? Because it's not a one time one time job, but it's kind of journey. So think about all the data that is being generated each day and that is available in an organization from transactional data in a traditional data set, telemetry data uh, from services, whatever you are, whatever services you are using. Uh, to signals uh, that will give you signals to uh, get from different areas like social media or some other information. You can see here in the left side, we have a kind of different set of data sources like SAP, SharePoint, Salesforce, uh, Oracle, SQL, Access, Excel, Facebook, this is social media. So these are the information from where you can get something and business of today uh, will collect and store massive amount of data Yet business continue to struggle to use their data in a maintaining a meaningful and productive way. Though we have a lot of data, we are storing some of them, but we still are not able to like represent the data in a meaningful and productive way, right? Which will eventually impact their ability to act. Like we have the data, but we are not able to act on those data uh, because we don't have a kind of uh, maintainable way how we can represent the data and how we can get the conclusion, some, something uh, conclusive decision from that data. So business should be able to use their vast amount of data and information in such a way that impacts the business. So we, it's fine, we have the data, but how to, how this data will help us to improve the business and in, it will impact the business, right? So business decision makers depend on an accurate story uh, to drive better business decisions. The faster a business that can make precise decisions, the more competitive way, uh, they will be and the better advantage they will have. 
And the key to unlocking all this data is being able to tell a story with its uh, like uh, uh, compelling or insightful report. So if you have the data, just prepare something that can visualize as a report or uh, insightful reports, I would say, and that will definitely uh, give some better idea how the data comes in and what is the representation of data and that will help you to like take an action or decision uh, based on certain things. And your journey of telling a story with data also ties into building that data uh, culture within your organization. While telling the story is important, where the story is told is also crucial, like how you are uh, collecting the data, modeling the data and representing the data. And, uh, and how your organization will be benefited uh, using those data so that you have to define the uh, like uh, how you are trying to collect the data and information and how you want to represent or how you want to uh, uh, engage your team to like model the data in a proper way and then uh, before uh, data can be used to tell a story uh, it must run be it must first be run through a process. So before you telling something, then it should go with some process that makes it usable in the story, right? So uh, data analysis is the process of identifying. First, you have to identify the data, cleaning the data, transforming data, and modeling the data, which can help you to discover meaningful and useful information. So before telling something about this data, you should have this information readily available with you. And the data is then crafted in a story via reports for analysis to support the critical decision making process. So after this information, you can have something uh, as a report which can tell uh, some 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 management people or some the person who are uh, responsible to take decision. So they will have a better idea. And while the process of data analysis focuses on the task of cleaning, modeling and visualizing data, the concept of data analysis and how it is important to business that should not be understood. Right. So to analyze the data, core components of analytics are divided in the different categories. So if you think about there are five categories available, if we talk about uh, uh, the analytics part, the so first is the descriptive. So descriptive analytics helps answers uh, questions about what has happened based on historical data, right? So you can get those information and this also uh, this this technique also summarizes the large data sets to describe outcomes to the stakeholders. So it, it also gives you some outcomes that will help uh, stakeholders to uh, get some information. And the second is the diagnostic. So diagnostic uh, analytics techniques uh, supplement more basic descriptive analytics and they take the findings from the descriptive analytics and dig deeper to find the cause and the performance indicators are further investigated to discover uh, why they got better or worse. Like right? whatever the descriptive data you have, you can diagnose that data why it is better or worse. And then you have the predictive uh, third uh, category for analytics. So predictive analytics technique use historical data to identify the trends and based on that it determines if they are likely to recur. And this tech, this tool also provides valuable insight into what may happen in the future. So you can just have some kind of prediction based on the, the data you have just diagnosed and that will definitely help uh, in next step. And the fourth one is the perspective uh, prescriptive. By using this uh, insight from the predictive analytic. So now we are just collecting or getting the reference of the predictive analytics data. So that data driven decisions can be made using that predictive uh, tools. And this technique allows business to make informed decisions in the face of uncertainty. And then we have the last one for the cognitive and cognitive uh, analytics help us to learn what might happen if circumstances change and how you might handle this situation. So we should have the uh, plan A and plan B readily available with us. So it also derives the conclusions based on existing knowledge base and then add these uh, findings back into the 
knowledge base for future inferences. Uh, a self-learning feedback, like for, for example, if plan A is not working, then you have cre already created the plan B. So you can store all this information somewhere as a centralized repository or knowledge base. So in future, the same thing happens, then you can just get the reference. OK, in past, this has already happened and we have the reference from there. So you can just uh, get that information and uh, uh, take a reference and do the uh, whatever the required step to uh, overcome from this problem. So that comes into that part. And uh, then we have the roles in data. So uh, you can see these are the different, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, you are not alone, like this is a journey and it usually does not start with uh, uh, PL300 or whosoever is appearing for this, but the data must come from somewhere, right? And uh, uh, getting that data into a spot that is usable by you take some efforts and more than likely out of your scope, especially when we are thinking about the large scale enterprise. So uh, you can see here business and there are different set of uh, rules uh, in the organization. So all related with the data, right? So if you think about the business analyst, then while there are some similarities between a data analyst and business analyst, the key difference here, sir, between the two roles is what they do with data. Right, a business analyst is closer to the business itself and is a specialist on interpreting the data that comes from the visualization. Business analyst role comes after the visualization comes uh, into the picture. Often, the data analyst and business analyst could be accountability uh, could be the accountability uh, uh, of a single person. Sometimes it may happen that the one person is doing the same task. And then data analysts. So data analysts are responsible for proof, profiling, cleaning, and transforming the data, designing it, and building a scalable and performant uh, data models, and then enabling and implementing the advanced analytics capabilities into reports, which can be analyzed. And that this data analyst also works with data engineers to determine and locate appropriate data sources and uh, in a best way to identify new processes or improve uh, existing processes. So I have just defined the roles. We already discussed about that, like what would be the role for the data analyst. But these are the difference like this between business analyst and the data analyst. Now what is for a data engineer? So so uh, it is uh, this this data engineer primary primary responsibilities of uh, data engineers, uh, which can include the use of on premises and cloud data services and tools to ingest. Uh, transform data from multiple sources, so they will be able to maintain those on premises and cloud services tools. And then uh, they provision and set up data platform technologies that are on premises and in the cloud. It could be anything. Your data could be available in on premise or in the cloud. Right. So they they basically uh, their job is that. And then we have the data scientists. So this perform advanced analytics to extract value from data, and their work can vary from descriptive analytics to predictive analytics. So they can just extract some value from the data and they can just analyze this descriptive analytics and predictive analytics. So using descriptive analytics, they can evaluate the data through a process known as exploratory data analysis that is called EDA. And predictive analytics are used in machine learning and which can apply uh, modeling techniques uh, that can detect anomalies of patterns, anomalies or patterns uh, and these are an important part of uh, forecast model. So if you want to use that, then you have to use the predictive and descriptive analytics tools in, in, in that uh, section. And then last, we have the database administrator. So a database administrator implements and manages the operational aspect of cloud native and hybrid data platform solutions built on Microsoft Azure data services and Microsoft SQL services. 
and they are responsible for overall uh, availability and consistent performance of and optimization of the data set solutions. So database administrator basically responsible for managing those servers, either it could be on your uh, on-prem SQL or Azure SQL and uh, avail make it av highly available for users to access the data from anywhere. So these are the roles, uh, different roles we are talking, if we are talking about how to uh, deal with the data. So uh, it's like just give you an idea, like what is the difference between this business analyst, data analyst, data engineer, uh, science, data scientist and uh, DBA. Right? And you also have kind of uh, understanding like as a data analyst, what are the tasks associated with me? Right. We understood OK, data analysts have to do this kind of collecting the data, cleaning the data, uh, transform the data, model the data, but. In a in a which way? So these are the tasks you can see. So. Uh, that you look at the uh, who and uh, the what it's time to look at the how, right? How how you can do this? You already know that a data analyst is one of several critical roles in an organization which can help to uncover and make sense of information uh, to keep the company balanced and operating uh, efficiently as such it is vital uh, it is vital that you as a data analyst clearly understands your responsibility and the tasks that are performed on a re near daily basis like you can do some tasks on daily basis uh, and the skill set of a data analyst is essential in helping organizations gain valuable insights, whatever into the uh, expansion of data uh, they are looking for, or you can uh, have a kind of working uh, closely with others in their respective roles in the organization, which can help to bring the light valuable uh, information, which can help uh, a, an organization in a, in a way. So as such, there are uh, you can see there are uh, five key areas uh, that you will engage in during the data analysis process as a data analyst. So first is the prepare. So as a data analyst, you will probably spend most of your time split between the prepare and model. So first you have to prepare, model it, prepare, model it. So you have to spend more time in first uh, into this uh, first two tasks. Either it's a bad or incorrect data can have a major impact. So resulting that will result in invalid reports or a loss of trust. And it can also negatively affect business decisions, which lead to loss in revenue as well as a negative business impact and many more. So uh, your focus should be more in the prepare. And then we have the model as a second uh, task category. So once you are done with the uh, uh, the data like uh, once the data is in a proper state, now it is ready to model. So data modeling is the process of determining how your tables are related to each other. So we have to create the tables, tables in the sense where we have we are storing the data and how all the tables are related to each other. Either we are using one table or five table or n number of tables. So all the tables should be normalized in terms of the relationship. So it will give a proper model data when we are trying to pull that in the visualization. So this is done by uh, you have to define it and creating uh, and relationships between the tables. So you have to define the table or create the table and just provide the relationship between all the uh, associated tables from there. You can enhance the model by defining matrix and adding custom calculations to enrich your data. So once we have the relationship available for all the uh, all the tables, then we can extend this. Uh, how we want to retrieve the data, either we want to create some extra columns or we want to create some matrix and pull those in pull those matrix or calculated column information in the visualization. So now it comes to the visualization, the third point. And this is a task where you get to bring your data to life, right? So till model, we have data, but it is still available in a table. So it is not visible to the users. Now it is time to visualize the data 
in a proper way to the end users. So the goal of the visualize task is to ultimately solve business problems. A well designed report should tell a compelling and impactful story about that data, enabling business decision makers to quickly gain needed insights. So the data available in the table, but it is not in a use for the person who is taking the decision, right? So visualization help them to visualize the data, get some more insights because it is coming as a user interface. It is not coming in the in the form of row or any number. So by looking into the visualizations, they will be able to uh, take like uh, 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 kind of more insights how the data will look like going forward and they understand where we have to change something in the organization. So that will help uh, them to uh, take any decisions. And once the data is available in visualization, then uh, again it comes to the analyze. So this task is the important step of understanding and interpreting the information that is displayed on the report. So now you have something on the uh, report as a visualization and you are looking into the data and now you have to analyze something. OK, this product sale is very low for this reason in this month of uh, time. So you have to analyze why it is happening so that visualization gives you an impact so you can analyze something right so in role as a data analyst you should understand the analytics analytical capabilities of power bi and use those to find insights identify patterns and trends predict some out outcomes and then communicate those insights in such a way that everyone can understand so you have to visualize it, analyze it, and then explain in a better way that everyone can understand. OK, we have to more focus on these areas where we are like uh, if you are talking about the low product sell, then you can think about that from the analyze. And then last one is the manage. So there are many components in Power BI, uh, for example, how you are managing this information right now. I'm talking about that. So there are a lot of components available in Power BI, for example, reports, dashboards, workspace, data sets, and many more. Right? I, I'll show you that in demo how uh, reports, dashboard, workspace, what are those uh, terms and uh, keywords and from where we can access that. So as a data, data analyst, you are responsible for the management of these Power BI assets. As a data analyst, you should be aware like how to manage these assets, right? And uh, sometimes you have to oversee the sharing and distribution of the items, such as, for example, if you have shared some reports and dashboards and uh, make sure that security of our Power BI assets. So you are sharing workspace with the correct person who, who is actually responsible to uh, look into that, not with everyone. So as a data analyst, you should also manage those assets along with how you want to share and distribute different set of items, right? So these five tasks uh, you can consider when you are talking about a role of data analyst. So uh, that will definitely help you to understand your role in a better way. Like what are the important steps uh, you have to uh, cover when you are trying to prepare some data, model it and visualize it and that will help you analyze it and then you can share those reports with different set of people. OK, so that was all about uh, uh, how. Uh, you can just consider about the data analyst task and now we are jumping into that getting started with Power BI. So, so far we just talk about. Uh, how you, data analyst can collect the data, uh, prepare some data, model it, visualize it and analyze it, but now how. Whenever it comes to the Power BI, how the data will look like, right? So. We'll talk about that. So, as a whatever the data you have as a raw data, now we are using Power BI to uh, display the data in a better way. So, uh, the person who is looking into the reports or in the in a dashboard, they can understand. Okay, I need to take some decision, bad decision or worse decision based on the data you are looking for. Now, so in short, Power BI is a collection of software services apps and connectors 
that all work together to turn your unrelated sources of data into coherent, visually immersive and interactive insights, right? So it's not a kind of single component we are using, but we are using different set of software services. Even we can use apps, third party apps and some different connectors that all come all come together and we can visualize such kind of a dashboard or report that will help us to understand the data in a better way. So whether your data is a simple Microsoft Excel workbook or a collection of cloud based and on premise uh, hybrid data warehouses. Power BI lets you easily connect to your data sources, visualize it and uh, you can share with everyone. So it is not limited that you can use a single data source, but your source of data could be anything. Your data can come from Excel spreadsheet. On premises SQL or any Azure SQL or any any third party location, for example, SharePoint document library, you are pulling some Excel sheet from there or OneDrive for business. So all data can come together in a single dashboard in a, in a single report. And then you have the visualization in a better way, and that also can be shared with other people in the organization. Right. So uh, as I mentioned that all this data can be displayed in a. Different devices. Right, so you can see first is a desktop, so a free application uh, you install on your local computer and that lets you connect to uh, transform and visualize your data. So you can use this Power BI desktop if you want to do some kind of uh, hands on for these reports. So you can use that. And then we have the services. So services like a SaaS service which brings together dashboard, workspace, reports and data sets for keeping a finger on the pulse of your business. So I will show you that Power BI services once you are creating something uh, from Power BI desktop from your local system and you are publishing into this uh, Power BI services. From there you have this workspace, dashboards, reports and data sets available for you to manage from that. And then we have the mobile. Third one is the mobile. So in mobile uh, uh, that helps to connect to and interact with your cloud and on-premises data. You create reports in Power BI desktop and you create dashboard and view dashboards and reports in the Power BI report service. So for example, you can see in this screen, you can see one laptop. So that, that's my desktop system where I'm creating a report using this Power BI or, uh, desktop. And I'm publishing that report in those uh, Power BI services. You can see in the uh, bottom right corner image. So once my uh, reports and dashboards are available there, there from there I can also uh, uh, have some information uh, or whatever the like. For example, we on premises Power BI reports on Power BI report server, and all these reports and that uh, dashboards are available in the Power BI mobile app as well. So the same thing can be uh, available in the mobile app when I'm talking about different set of devices access the same report or same information from my uh, whatever the data I have. Right, so uh, it all depends how you use Power BI and uh, it might be a kind of on your role on a project or a team like it all depends on your role on a specific project or a team, how you are going to represent it. And other people in the other role might use Power BI differently, which is just fine. It, it, it depends like if I'm using, I am using this report as an end user, then I do not need to concern about what is Power BI flat, uh, desktop, what is Power BI service, what are the apps? I do not uh, concern about that. But if you are as a data analyst, then you have, you will, have to know all in and out of this like Power BI Auto, uh, this uh, desktop, Power BI services, and uh, Power BI mobile app. So you will be able to understand. I have to use Power BI desktop just to uh, deal with my uh, preparing the reports, dashboard, and then make it available for uh, all the users from Power BI services. And then end user can access from anywhere, like they can access from Power BI services or uh, their mobile application. So uh, we can say that the flow, if you talk about the flow, like how this works. So 
the flow of work in power bi is a common flow of work in power bi begins in power bi desktop as i mentioned that i have to write something or start some development from my power bi desktop there a report is created so i'm creating my report in power bi desktop and that that report is published to the power bi services so it goes to the power bi service and finally it is shared so that users of power bi mobile app can consume that information so this is the whole flow in a in a in a simplest way i can explain like you have to create reports in your power bi desktop make it available in power bi services from there you can share with end users and that end user can access those reports in their power bi mobile app so uh, this is how it will work now uh, this is a basic information on that. Now we go with the use Power BI. So now that we have introduced uh, the basic of Power BI and uh, we uh, jump into some hands-on experience uh, and a guide tour, like how this, uh, how to use the Power BI, right? So first you have to like, uh, uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the common flow of activity. So it will look like uh, you can bring the data in Power BI desktop, create the report. So you can see in the left side navigation, we have the different set of data source. It could be your file server, it could be Excel, it could be SQL server, the data could be on your cloud, or it could be a flat file, CSV file. Now you are bringing that data into Power BI desktop. So in the middle of this screen, in this PPT, you can see that uh, in monitor, I have opened my Power BI desktop. So I'm just bringing the data from any data source to Power BI desktop. And uh, I'm just uh, creating some reports and publishing into the uh, this uh, uh, creating new visualization or build dashboard and sharing dashboard with others, especially people who are on the go and view the uh, I'm just uh, allowing them to view and interact with the shared dashboard and report in Power BI mobile apps. And as mentioned earlier, you might spend all your time in the Power BI service viewing the visualization and reports that have been created by others. And that is also fine. Like someone else on your team might spend their time in Power BI desktop, which is fine too. Like it's not necessary that they can just view the reports. And to help you understand the full continuum of Power BI and what it can do, I'll, I'll show you all of that uh, uh, after this uh, short break. We'll jump into that Power BI desktop and Power BI services, and we'll we'll see how how you can just uh, have the visualization and understanding of the tool, actual tools I'm talking about as of now. And uh, then we can just uh, jump into that uh, uh, steps through the experience, like your first order of, for example, you can create something with which can help you to uh, get some information. So for example, uh, whatever you are doing uh, 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 in Microsoft Power BI, that can be broken down into a few basics building blocks. And after you understand this building blocks, uh, you can expand on each of uh, them and uh, begin creating elaborated and complex reports. Uh, let's say for example, uh, we'll see some of the building blocks here. So uh, for example, uh, uh, you can see in this screen visualization. So sometimes all uh, also referred as a, a visual. So it is a visual representation of data. Like uh, for example, you can see in this image chart, then map, then uh, where you have the total stores is 104. So that's a kind of tile. So these are the different components which can be used to uh, have a kind of uh, all together visualization with different data, but user will be able to easily understand, okay, I have 104 stores and the year sales is 22 million. And uh, also we have the these maps available, so they can also visualize, okay, the years of sales in this region is this much and the years of sales in this uh, region is uh, different than uh, the other states. So based on that, you can get some more insights on the data and understand that how it will work. Right? The same way you can also represent uh, in a different way. So this is the representation of the reports, but in a 
uh, using different building blocks. So building blocks are nothing but kind of visualization, data sets, reports, dashboard, and types. So you can see all the components I try to cover here. So I have covered these uh, data sets. So whatever the data we are trying to pull, that is known as the data set. Then visualization. So visualization can be anything. It could be chart, tile, map, anything. And then we can just create the reports. And all these components are available in dashboard. So this is called dashboard where we are representing more than one information. And the ties, you can see these ties, uh, this uh, 33 percent, 60K, uh, 68, 4, those are the ties. So where we are just displaying the number in a in a better way that OK, they can understand uh, as a like uh, uh, insights, more insights of the data. Now we'll see uh, uh, that building blocks uh, with more detail. So you can see here. Uh, I'm just representing this reports here to different set of so, so in the left side you can see this is my data and this data will be represented in a in a report like this so you can see uh, i have number of records available in my excel sheet and i'm using that data and generating this report so from data it is very difficult to understand uh, what is the new hiring process and how many numbers we have then what is all the information, right? But if you mold, model this data and make it available as a visualization, then it will look like this. So that will definitely help uh, uh, end user to understand uh, your actual data, look, uh, uh, the visualization of the data, and based on that, they can take an action, like how your data will look like. Now, uh, how you can use uh, uh, Power BI, uh, like in, if we talk about touring and using our Power BI uh, capability. So the common flow of work in uh, Microsoft Power BI is to create the report in Power BI desktop, publish it to Power BI services, and then share it with others so that uh, they can view it in the service or on a mobile app. So here you can see this interface is a Power BI service. So if I go to the previous slide here, you can see in the left navigation, we have the workspace, then apps. But if I go to the previous slide. This one. This this monitor one, this is my power get desktop. So this is the difference. So but I, I'll show you when uh, we are coming to that in uh, exploring the interface. So, uh, but because some people begin in Power BI services, let's get an overview of that first and learn about an easy and popular way to quickly create visualization in Power BI apps. So uh, you can see uh, the app is selected in the left navigation from uh, this uh, PPT slide. So app is a collection of uh, preset ready-made visuals and reports that are shared with an entire organization. So from here you can see uh, what is available for organization and using an app is like micro viewing a tv dinner or ordering a fast food value meal so you just have to press a button uh, or make a few comments and you are quickly served with a collection of entries uh, designed to go there all presented in a tidy and ready to consume package so it means we have the apps available so if you click on that and all the available apps will be there with three sets of data and once you add the tab, the default or the basic information for related to data will be available for you. And the canvas, uh, the area in the center of the Power BI service, you can see here we have this pull request and everything, shows you the available sources of data in the Power BI services. So there are apps for all sort of online services, so you can consider that and update in the Power BI service. So you can choose the update. So uh, if you have any kind of update, uh, like they, they are having different set of versions for the Power BI. So you can also use that update option to update the uh, Power BI services uh, versions, right? So I will explain you in a more detail uh, when we are talking about this interface from 
where you can view this workspace, what is update, what are the apps available, what are the predefined set of uh, templates available so that can help you to explore more rather than creating the data source and uh, transforming the data from there. So that will be easy for you to just hands on uh, start with the hands on. Right. So. Uh, so far, I think uh, we have covered that uh, basics of Power BI and everything. So before we uh, uh, move to the next session, I have just prepared a few set of questions for whatever discussion we had so far. So I just uh, pull out three questions like what are the building blocks of Power BI? And second question is what is the common flow activity in Power BI? As I earlier explained like a couple of times and you explained that what is the uh, simplest way to explain the flow of Power BI? And then we have third questions, a collection of ready-made visuals pre-arranged in data uh, in, in dashboards and reports is called what? What it is called? So if anyone knows about any answer, then uh, they can just uh, unmute and uh, if, if okay to answer, they can give it. Or else I am here to uh, give answer, but just to check the knowledge, like uh, are you getting what I was explaining? And if you can relate what has been discussed. So, so hi Kirti, Pritish yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So building blocks of Power BI's would be like uh, reports, tiles, data set, all this. Awesome, perfect. So answer is visualizations. First, where we are uh displaying the data right and second from where we are pulling the data so that is our data sets and in what met what manner we are displaying the data so that is reports or ties and all this come together in dashboard right so those are the building blocks nice very good okay anyone for second question what is the common flow of activity in power bi You have to explain the flow like from where to start and how end user can access that. Uh, may I answer again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone can. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just try. So it will be like uh, we'll pull out data from a source mm -hmm. and uh, bring out that data to say like maybe if we are building a report in Power BI desktop, then we'll pull out mm -hmm. data to that uh, Power BI desktop. Mm -hmm. uh, say if we are building some report, so in that report, mm -hmm. and then that report we will publish it to Power BI service or workspace anywhere, mm -hmm. and uh, then using that uh, published model, we can share it with someone and uh, they can access that data which we pulled out initially. Perfect, bang on. So answer is correct, and bring data into Power BI desktop. First, you have to bring the data in your Power BI desktop. Then create the report in the same Power BI desktop area. You can share it to the Power BI services. Share it in the sense you are publishing the report, so that will be available for end users. And then uh, from Power BI services, once you have published that report or make it available for end users by sharing that, those reports or whatever the information available in the dashboard will be able to access by end user using mobile app or not related, not restricted to mobile app, but that link can be used anywhere. Like say, for example, if you have a SharePoint site where you are just uh, have one section called reports and under that you are just giving a name product report. So once you click on that product report in the uh, in the in the main area, you can use Power BI viewer uh, web part and then you can just have your report in the SharePoint site, right? So there are a lot of other options to uh, view this information, but for this example, I've just prepared a kind of this kind of flow so you can easily relate to that. OK, now uh, question number three, uh, a collection of ready made visuals prearranged in dashboards and reports are called. It's an app in Power BI app. Yes, that. Right, so if you see, I've just collected all these questions from the this slide only. 
right here I, I in the beginning i explained that uh, because this is important like as it is data analysis you know that how to collect the data uh, transform the data model the data but you should be also aware with what is the flow right so yeah all correct answer and uh, yeah i am happy that you are following me whatever i am explaining so this is just a kind of knowledge check like uh, uh, if you are able to answer it, that is fine. If you are not, that is also okay. But if you are like uh, understanding in a better way, then you will just understand the terminology. Like what are the building blocks? So you, it comes into your mind. OK, these are the building blocks. How we can implement the flow? What are the steps? And what is readily available for us? If you do not want to create anything, uh, as a developer, as a business uh, data analyst, or if you do not want to implement from scratch, but I would have some uh, already created uh, data sets or the files should be available for me. Right? Okay, all good. Now we'll move to the next one. Uh, that is how you are preparing the data in Power BI. Right, so in this, uh, we'll try to cover uh, how to get the data from various data sources. After getting the data source, how you are optimizing the performance and uh, you are also resolving some data errors. It may happen that whenever you are pulling the data, it is not 100% sure that you will not get an error, but it may happen that you are loading the data. This, this Power BI desktop might uh, give some warnings or errors. Okay, something is wrong. So we have to correct those errors, if if any. Right. So let's see uh, how data analytics and Microsoft uh, together. So here we'll see uh, getting data from various data sources, optimizing performance, and resolving it. So, for example, uh, uh, like most of uh, us, uh, you work for a company where you are required to build Microsoft Power BI reports, and the data resides in several uh, several different database databases and files. So these data repositories are different from each other. For example, some are coming from Microsoft SQL Server or some are in Microsoft Excel, right? But all the resolution are related to data only. We only concern with the data from where it is coming. We don't care about, right? So you can see in this image, we have the data coming from sales data from Microsoft SQL Server. HR data coming from Microsoft Excel and warehouse app data coming from the Cosmos DB and finance Azure's analytics server cubes. So this is coming from the Azure. And we are just querying on all the data. You can see you have written Power Query for all four data sources and we are just pulling the data into Power BI, right? And then uh, make it available for end user. So, before you can create reports, you must first extract data from the various data sources. So as a data analyst, it is our responsibility to extract the data from different data sources, whatever it is, right? So interacting with SQL Server is different from Excel. Now you may have questions. OK, what are the uh, steps to connect with that? So for to connect with each and every data sources, the steps are different. Right, because this is differently like created or the product we are using is a different uh, uh, with, uh, with each other. So you should learn the nonsense, uh, nonsense of both the system, like how I am connect with Excel and how to connect with SQL. So after you learn the per particulars of each system, you can use Power Query. And now the question should be what is Power Query? So Power Query is used by Power BI and Excel, right? So if you want to deal with that, and which can help you to clean the data, uh, such as, uh, for example, if you want to rename the columns, replacing some values, and removing some errors, and combining query results. So it may happen that you are just trying to uh, merge a couple of columns and uh, give it a uh, custom name column custom column name so you can also rename that and after the data has been cleaned and organized you are ready to build reports in power bi so once the data is available in an organized manner then you can create these reports and finally you will publish all uh, this all the combined data set and reports to power bi services 
and from there other people can use your data set and build their own reports or uh, they can use the reports that you have already built and additionally if someone else built a data set that you'd like to use you can build reports from that too so basic uh, idea is it is not restricted that the data can be received from any one any single data source but it could be anything but you as a data analyst you have to make sure that how should i collect the data and combine it into one data set and then data set can be used as my uh, source for the report creation right so that is why uh, we have to deal with this now second you can also get data from flat files so uh, I mean, assuming that organizations often export and store data in files, one possible file format is like, for example, flat file. A flat file is a type of file that has only one data table and every row of data is in the same structure. You can see the flat file name. We have only one table and the file does not contain hierarchies like uh, you are familiar with the most common types of flat files, uh, which are comma separated values, the CSV file. Uh, where delimited text, uh, this txt file and fixed width files. So another type of file would be the output file from different applications. For example, uh, .xl sx, Microsoft Excel workbooks. So Power BI desktop allows you to get data from many types of files. It is not restricted to one file only. So determine the location of the file. So first step is to determine which file location that you want to use to export and store your data. So earlier, as I mentioned that it could be your local system, that is your physical server, physical desktop, or it could be OneDrive, or it could be SharePoint, right? So you have to determine the location of the file from where you are trying to pick it. And then second is connect to the data file. How you can connect? So I'll show you uh, in the interface. We have that option uh, called get data. So we will connect from there. And then you have to use select the data in the file to import what data you want to select, which can be imported. So you have to uh, transform the data in a better way so that can be accessible for you. So here you can see the load button and transform the data. So we will use that. And the third one is uh, you can change the source file. So it may happen that sometimes you might have to change the location of a source file for a data source during development or if a file storage location changes. So you can also do that. But if you are changing the path, make sure that if you are changing the path uh, that you are you, you have to reconnect to the same file with the same file structure. Any structural changes to this file, such as for deleting or renaming columns in the source file, will break the reporting model. So make sure whenever you're trying to change the path, you should be aware with that. OK, so that is regarding how you can collect the data and then. How uh, uh, get data from relational data sources? So if we have the SQL database, then what are the different options or how we can collect, uh, connect the data? So if your organization uses a relational database to record its, for example, sales transaction, so you can use Power BI Desktop, which can establish a connection to your organization's relational database rather than getting data from individual flat files. So connecting Power BI to a data set that will definitely help you to monitor the progress of your business and identify trends so you can forecast some sales figures or uh, uh, product related information or uh, you can plan budgets and set some performance indicators and targets for your sales team and this can connect to many relational databases uh, that are either in the cloud or on premises right your relational database can be available anywhere so you can also connect from there too and then we have this uh, Get data from NoSQL. So here you can see uh, in the left navigation, you can see get data option. And these are the options available like file, database, power platform, Azure, online services, other. And in the right side section, if you select any category, Azure, so it will display all the possible options available from where you can pull the data in terms of Azure that is available for you. So if we uh, 
uh, talk about NoSQL, then some organization don't use this, a relational uh, database. Uh, database, but instead use a NoSQL database, right? So a NoSQL database also referred as non-SQL, not only uh, SQL or non-relational. It is a flexible type of database that does not use tables to store the data. So it may happen that you have to deal with this. So we also have that options available to pull the data. For example, uh, uh, Cosmos DB or Azure Blob Table Storage or MongoDB. So if you remember in the beginning as a prerequisites, I mentioned that Azure services prerequisites are required. So this is related to uh, that is related to this component. Like if you want to deal with some Azure uh, 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 as a data source or pulling data from Azure, then you should have some knowledge or at least know about all the data sources available uh, from the Azure. So this is another option that uh, we can connect with uh, in NoSQL. And then uh, we have this get data from applications as well. So as I mentioned that it is not restricted that we can use only uh, such kind of information for a list or like that. But we have the capability to, to get the data from other applications as well. So. Uh, for example. Uh, uh, for example, let's say HR data. So to support their daily operations, organizations frequently use a range of software applications. For example, SharePoint, OneDrive, Dynamics 365, Google Analytics, and there are a lot of uh, applications available. So these applications produce their own data. And Power BI can combine the data from multiple applications. Which can help them to produce more meaningful insights and reports. It is not restricted to use only one as a data source, but it could be a kind of combination of uh, data from multiple applications. So uh, if you are talking about uh, when connecting to data in application, you would begin the same way as uh, we connecting other data sources. There is nothing, no difference in how to connect with, but instead of getting the data, we have to just select this online service. If I go to here in the left navigation, you can see the online service option. So if you select that, it will ask you to uh, which type of online service you want to access. Right, so other uh, like options available for that category, and from there we can use this URL and that information or the data, whatever the data we have, that will be available for us in that uh, uh, get data or the table which is about to load like this. Once we get the data, it will come like this, and we have to either load or transform the sorry, transform the data. So. It means that whatever the data source you have, once you are getting the data from there, it will ask you to load or transform. So transform is basically used from if you want to exclude some columns or rename the column, then you can use the transform data. Or if you are OK with uh, like loading the data as is, just click on the load. So you will be able to load the data as it is. So this is all about that. And then in the next session after this break, uh, we will be covering this optimizing the performance. Like once we have the data available, then how we can optimize that data, right? How to optimize all this data available with us and uh, how we can utilize those data in a better way. So let's have a 15 minutes break as about we are about to reach at 11.30 and then we can start with the uh, optimized performance. Uh, Katie, sir, if you don't yeah. mind, can you take the queries after the break, which is mentioned yeah. by Sanjay in the yeah. chat box? Okay. Yeah, we can just address right now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we will go on lunch break. Uh, uh, sorry, we will go on the break for 15 minutes. We will resume back by 11.45. Till then, guys, those who have not submitted the MOC activation form to receive the MOC code for PL300, please do that. I have pinned the message on the top of the chat box, so you can go through that link and submit your response to receive the PL300 MOC. We will be sharing shortly the MOC code on your email IDs. 
those who have not submitted i request all to submit that thank you yeah uh, sanjay to address your answer so uh, it, it can happen that some of the sales in the data set is not received what to do in such cases yeah so that is coming for the transformation of data if you have that data available in your data source then it should come but if there are any errors then you have to address while transforming the data then second is some files can be corrupt do we have to ensure that yes make sure that the file should not be corrected corrupted otherwise it will not reflect as as per your requirement then do we have to normalize the table before importing them? It is not necessary because when we are, uh, I will show you in the demo, when we are having the tables available in the Power BI desktop, we have an option to uh, make a relationship between all those tables before uh, transferring or modeling the data. So that option is available in the Power BI desktop only. No need to like uh, uh, have the normalization before getting the data, but yeah, we have an option to make relationship between all the tables from Power BI desktop. Yes, and I hope uh, that answers your questions. And you will come to know uh, once we open that power bi desktop where I'm, I'm talking about creating the relationships and anything yeah.
Guys, those who have joined late in the session, I have mentioned the MOC activation form again in the chat box. So you can go through that and submit your response. I repeat, I have mentioned the MOC activation form again in the chat box. So you can submit your response on it. Thank you. Chaitali? Yes, sir. Yeah, can we start now? Yeah, yeah, you can. Oh. Uh, just one question by Sachin. How to connect with ongoing data like as live product data? So you um, can take that question. You can see in the chat box by Sachin it is Sachin Bhatia. No, no, down there, down. There. How to connect with ongoing data like as yes, live product data? Okay, so it depends like what data source we are using. Like if it is SQL or uh, uh, Excel, so we have to write a direct query on that 
data set rather than uh, creating into that uh, as a data table. Uh, I'll show you that there are like different options available when we are dealing with that, but it is recommended that you can create the data source and uh, have the incremental refresh for those data source where we need a kind of real time data, like for example, uh, stock exchange or uh, any kind of uh, financial data which can be fluctuated in a kind of uh, fraction of second or minute of sec second, then you have to get this real time information for end users. So in that case, we can create the incremental refresh. Incremental refresh will allow you to uh, refresh the data at a specified interval of time. Even though we have the scheduled refresh option, so I will explain you that how to use that uh, scheduled refresh option. But in that we have the limitation, like uh, we can create 48 uh, scheduled refresh for one day, considering 24 hours, one with the 00, zero and one with the 30 limit, 30 minutes limit. So uh, there are two options to get the refreshed data. I will show you that uh, when we talk about that interface uh, from the Power BI service. Sachin, uh, are you okay with that answer as of now? And once we look into that Power BI service, I will explain you from where you can uh, configure that. Okay, so let's move to that. <clears throat> Optimize the performance. So uh, before this, we were talking about uh, how to get the data from different data sources. Now, once you have the data, then how you can optimize the data? So it is like most important task that uh, as a data analyst, you have to perform. Like once you have the data, but how you can uh, have the data in a way that uh, that can enhance the performance when you are trying to uh, create or use that into the, your data sets. So the most popular way to use data in Power BI is to import it into the Power BI data set, as I mentioned that use as a data set and importing the data. Uh, I'm talking about this. So importing the data means that the data is stored in the Power BI files and it will be uh, get published along with the Power BI reports. So this process will help uh, make it easier for you to interact directly with your data. So as I was mentioning in the Sachin's answer, so you have to create the data and it will help you to get uh, all the data uh, interact interaction directly with your data. However, this approach might not work for all organization because sometimes what happens, it may be possible that some organizations are not allowing us to like uh, directly connect with the data. And uh, we have to use some intermediate information uh, to uh, connect with those data or get the data from somewhere. So there are three different types of storage models uh, we can choose uh, from. One is the input, so you can see I was just explaining the direct query, so that was one uh, option to connect with your data set. So first is the import. The import mode uh, allows you to create a local Power BI copy of your data set from your data set. So this will be a kind of local copy, not directly connect with your data set, but it will allow us to like it is a temporary uh, uh storage location of your data the second one is the direct copy uh, sorry direct query so it will create a direct connection to the data source whatever the data source is uh, you are using so you can just connecting directly with that data source and that also you have to ensure your data is not cached and you are always viewing the most up to date data so uh, uh, I think this answers that question like how to connect with the real time data. So you can uh, create this direct query option as a uh, uh, storage mode and then that allows you to connect with your data source. 
and the third one is the dual. It's a kind of composite. So identify some data to be directly imported and other data that must be required. So it may happen that uh, we are not looking out for all the data could be connected directly, but some of the data can be kind of uh, used as an import, right? So if you want to like have the combination of this import and direct query, then you can use this dual option. So there are three more three options uh, we can uh, choose for uh, storage modes. So however, uh, sometimes there uh, may be security requirements around your data that make it impossible to direct import a copy. So as I mentioned, that sometimes the companies or organizations are not allowing us to uh, import the data directly due to some security restrictions and some other compliances. That's one thing or your data sets may simply be too large and would take too long to load in Power BI. So you have to also consider this point in mind when you're trying to import. If the data set is too large, then it will take a lot of time to load the data and you have to wait until the data loads in that data set. So. And you want to avoid creating a performance bottleneck. So because of that, the performance uh, issues will be there. So you have to avoid that before moving ahead by like modeling and visualization for the data. So Power BI also solves these problems by using the direct query. Uh, this uh, direct query storage mode option, which allows you to query the data in the data source directly and not import a copy into Power BI. So we are just connecting with the uh, directly with the data source. We are not importing something and just uh, deal with that imported file. So direct query is useful because it ensures you are always viewing the most recent version of the data. So in that case, you do not need to worry about uh, uh, when you are looking out for data that it will give you the one hour back uh, information, whatever available in your data set, but you will be able to see the real time data. And then using the dual mode allows Power BI to choose the most efficient form of data retrieval. So as I mentioned that it may happen that you might require some uh, in something from the imported and something from the direct query. So you can use that. So you can set the storage mode for each table. Let's say, for example, in uh, uh, in the report, uh, we have five tables. So for each table, uh, you can storage, uh, you can define the storage mode for each table individually in your model. And this action enable a single data set, which provides the uh, two types of benefits. First, it will enhance the query performance and then data refresh optimization. So data refresh optimization, as I was mentioning earlier, that we have an option to uh, uh, create a scheduler for the uh, data refresh. So it also optimize that data refresh options. So you can also think about this when you are trying to select a storage mode, like what type of storage mode you want to use. Right? And then we have a kind of uh, fixed performance issues. Let's say, for example, once you are like uh, uh, OK to uh, go ahead and load it with data storage, then we might have some issues with the performance uh, issues. So we have to fix that. So occasionally what happens like organizations will need to address performance issues when running reports and power bi provides the performance analyzer tool which can help you to fix problems and streamline the process so from here you can see from the tools uh, tab we have these options where you can just uh, uh, diagnose the problem what is happening with this data so data set and why we are getting these performance issues so that will help you to Opti uh, like identify the issue and you can diagnose that. So considering the scenario where you are building reports for the sales team in your organization and you have imported some of your data, which is in uh, several tables uh, within the sales teams SQL database. We have one SQL database and uh, we have a few tables with sales data. Now we are creating a data connection to the data sets uh, data so database through direct query. So I'm trying to use direct query so I can get the real time information. And then you create preliminary visual and filters. You notice that some tables are queried faster than others. So it may happen that when we are loading the data, 
uh, we have five tables, but it may happen that out of five tables, two tables may get executed earlier than the rest of the tables. So, and uh, uh, so because the query faster than others because of the data, like what type, what number of records we have in each tables, and some filters are taking longer to process compared to others. So it may happen that two tables are completed and we are still waiting for three tables to complete the process. So what is the query diagnostics? So we have to use that uh, tool that you can use to study query performance in query diagnostic. So we can use that how the query is performing or executing this process. And this feature allows you to determine what bottlenecks, if any, if we have any bottlenecks, then it that will guide you like, OK, this is the problem in this query and you can optimize in a way. So. Uh, what type of bottlenecks exist uh, while loading and transforming the data or refreshing your data in Power Query and running SQL statement in Query Editor and so on. So it will give you an idea like what is happening with this query. So. What should be our technique, right? First, process as much as much as uh, as much data as possible in the original data source, right? Then second is use native SQL queries, and then third one is the separate date and time if bound together. Sometimes what happen like in our uh, field, we are just having this date and time column. So when you are transforming the data, so it is better that you can just separate out date and time. So we can just avoid that uh, 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 the issues or performance issues where we are uh, writing that query. So this way we have option to uh, fix some query performance issues uh, while we are loading the data. And then how we can optimize this query performance? Like right? here we, we were talking about this query optimization and everything, but how, how to do it? So uh, the performance in the power query all depends on the performance at the data source level right so we are just dealing with this data source so the variety of data sources that power query offers is very wide like there are a lot of options available uh, if we are using that and the performance tuning techniques for each source are equally wide same way like if we have the other of uh, more offers uh, uh, with the data source, then we have more options available to uh, uh, fine tune these techniques for all all the data sources. Let's say, for example, uh, if we are trying to extract uh, data from Microsoft SQL, we have the SQL server and we are trying to extract the data from there. Now, in that case, we are following the performance tuning guidelines uh, for the product whatever uh, they are suggesting for Microsoft SQL Server. And good SQL Server performance tuning techniques includes index creation. Then second is hardware upgrades. Third is execution plan tuning and data compressions. So these four points we are considering in mind when we are trying to use this or extract the data from SQL Server. Now, these topics are beyond the scope here, like we are not discussing more on that, but uh, that can be uh, covered in a better way for the Power BI query. But whenever we are thinking about how to optimize the query, then you have to consider on which data source you are using and what are the best uh, like performance tuning uh, guideline they have provided. We have to follow that. And Power Query takes advantage of good performance at the data source through a technique uh, called query folding. So we have this power query with uh, performance uh, tuning for the data source where we can use query folding so uh, that we can use for optimizing the query. So this is all about like how we can uh, deal with the data and then uh, the third part is the, how to resolve the errors. Let's say we are done with the query and uh, we have resolved uh, all this data related issues, optimize the query. Now, how? to resolve the data errors and what type of data errors we are getting, right? So it may happen that uh, while we are importing the data into Power BI, it, it, it may be possible that we encounter errors resulting from factors, for example, uh, 
Power BI import from numerous data sources, right? We are using n number of or different number of data sources where we are trying to get the data in data set. Second is each data source might have a number of different error messages. For example, here you can see in this data set, we have the company. So it is say timed out expired. Duplicates have different error messages. Like load was canceled by an error in loading a previous table. So each and every data set, data source might have a different set of errors. And other components can cause errors such as, for example, hard drives network when we are trying to pull the data or connect with that data source it may happen that uh, hard disk is uh, uh, come have that 100 percent capacity so we might not able to connect that data or pull the data from that physical location or it may happen that uh, network issue happens and we are not able to connect with that in a proper way or some software services or operating service operating system restricting us to connect with that so those are the options and then uh, data can often not comply with any specific scheme schema sorry so we might not have any predefined schema for that uh, specific uh, data so that also can uh, uh, be a kind of errors so basically mostly we may encounter this following errors like query timeout and couldn't find data formatted as table and could not find file or uh, data type errors so these are the most uh, frequently uh, like uh, uh, encountered errors while we are trying to uh, import the data. So what does this mean? Like first query timeout. So as I mentioned that it may happen that sometimes hardware resources comes into the picture. So this is related to that. So hardware resources are being constrained by concurrent users using the same data. So it may happen that whatever the hardware resources we are using to connect with it is like uh, concurrent users using the same data that might be the problem and we encounter this query timeout second is timeout expired so that indicates that uh, uh, you can see here in this uh, company's uh, refresh image we have that timed out expired so that indicates that you have pulled too much data according to your organization's policies so it may happen that we might have some organizational level policies and it restrict that you cannot pull such large amount of data. So that can be a kind of possibility. Then third one is they could not find data formatted, uh, could not find uh, a data. So Power BI expects to find data formatted as a table from Excel. So whatever the Excel we have, that should be in a table format. So we have to create Excel and then you have to create table instead of sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. So that should be available as a table. And then could not find file. So uh, this is caused by the file moving locations or the permissions to the file changing. It may happen that we have this some restrictions or the file location has been changed. So that comes under that category. And then we have the data type errors. So an error in interpreting the data type in Power BI. The resolution to this error is unique to the data source. So it all depends what data source you are using. Based on that, you have to identify the correct data type and you have to change accordingly. Right. So these are some common uh, uh, errors encountered while we are uh, talking about uh, identifying and resolving the data imports uh, error while we are trying to the data and then uh, we'll see how uh, we can uh, clean and transform and load the data in this uh, next couple of uh, like 15 13 minutes so here we'll see how you can save the data then profile your data whatever the data we have you can profile that data and enhance the data structure so in this uh, uh, slides we will see on that how how we can utilize that and here the main objective of this section is like what are the benefits of cleaning the data so we can get more accurate results and we can also uh, organize uh, tables in a better way and then we have the data navigation in the simpler way so end user can easily understand and it should be the human readable 
uh, as a value, whatever the result we are trying to display to end users, then all the information will be kind of human readable. So they can read and relate what is happening. Right? So first identify this column headers and names. So use Power Query Editor to clean up and save your data. So Power Query Editor in Power BI Desktop uh, that allows you to save. Save in the sense transform. So we are just shaping our data, like transforming our data uh, 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 in, a, in a proper way. So you can accomplish uh, actions such as renaming columns. So if you want to rename the column, then uh, or you, you want to rename the tables, change the text to numbers. So if you want to, if you have a column called text, but you are entering number like one, two, three, four, five, six, and you want to change that column to numbers, you can do that during this time, or you can remove some rows. You can set the first row as a header, and many things like you can just try to get the data in a way that it will be easy for a user to read the data. OK, this column is related to this data. And this row indicates this information for that particular record. So it is important to save your data to ensure that it meets your needs and is suitable for use in reports. So whatever the report you are looking out for uh, as a visualization, that will help you to uh, understand or give more insights based on whatever the type you are selecting for shaping your data or transforming your data. And then get started with uh, query editor in that you have to like uh, understand how the query editor will work. So if you want to uh, start shaping your data, uh, you can just uh, open the, your query editor and uh, select uh, transform data uh, from the specific tab. And then uh, once it is available, then you will be able to create reports. Like in this image, you can see I have two data sets. One is the data coming from Excel and one coming from my uh, cloud. So I'm transforming the data with Power Query, uh, Query Editor, and creating the reports in Power BI Desktop. And then I'm publishing those reports uh, in a way like all the headers and columns will be in a human readable manner so I can create proper report and those reports will be published into the Power BI service and from there my end user will be able to access those reports. So uh, it's a, it's a most important uh, a task to uh, like identify columns, names, change your data if required and then uh, make it available for your reports. Then uh, how you can uh, uh, so transform your table structure, right? So save the data to meet reporting needs. As I mentioned, that uh, the data you are like uh, extracting it should be in a in a way that uh, it will be easy to access for your reports. So with Power BI Desktop, you can connect uh, to many different types of data sources, and then uh, you can also save the data to meet your needs, enabling uh, which can help you to create visual reports, which can be shared with other users so that other users can get the information what actually they are looking out for. Not necessary that if your table is having 25 columns and you are just accessing or allowing 25 columns in your report, but user is only interested to look for five columns, right? So it ups to, up to you that what important column is required for the report. So based on that, you have to shape the structure of table and you can also remove unnecessary columns from there before creating or using into uh, the reports. And then uh, we have other options like uh, you can promote headers for tables like when you are creating uh, table is created in Power BI Desktop. This query editor assumes that all data belongs to the table rows. Belongs to in the table rows. We are not providing any headers so. A data source might have first row uh, that contains column name. Generally, what this happens, like uh, if you have the Excel set, then first row will be having with the column names or uh, as a header. So we can also promote the same thing uh, from the Power Query Editor. And second is if you want to rename the column name, 
then we have this option available. You can just uh, uh, right click. You can see here in the left side uh, image, I have used equal to table dot rename columns. So I'm just renaming the columns uh, as per my requirement. So user can easily understand what this column name um, meaning and what are the data available in this specific field. And then you can also remove these rows as well as the columns. You can see here I have opened that uh, menu like remove top rows, remove bottom rows, remove alternate rows. So this way you can like structure your data and you can get all the information which is required to generate that report only. It is not uh, possible that uh, you can have all these uh, 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 tables or columns available in your uh, reports, which is not necessary for all the users to access. Then uh, we have unpivot and pivot columns. So it may happen that uh, uh, we have these columns available and uh, uh, can be used for uh, reporting. So what is unpivoting uh, uh, column? So unpivoting is a useful feature of Power BI and you can use this feature with data from any data source, but you would most often use it uh, when importing data from Excel. So it is available for all the data sources, but it is more useful when we are talking about the Excel. So unpivoting uh, will help us to streamline the process and uh, a process of like in terms of uh, if you want to create uh, this DAX users. DAX users, so uh, for example, if I want to write any query uh, or if I want to create any measure, then this will help. Uh, uh, like uh, unpowering table or uh, table columns or pivot tables. So by completing this process, we will have a kind of proper information uh, how my data will be available for users. So here you can see in the left navigation, we have a category name as a column and subcategory name as a, a separate column where we have record called bikes. But if we talk about the uh, unpivoting and pivoting columns, it will display like this bikes, components, clothing, accessories, and then we have this number, whatever the number we have, 3, 14, 8, 12, right? So uh, if the data you are shaping is flat, for example, uh, or we can say in another word, it has a lot of details, but it is not organized or grouped in any way. We have the flat data, then the lake of structure can complicate your ability to identify patterns in the data. So it is very difficult for data analysts to analyze the data and very difficult to understand how the data will be represented. So you can use the pivot column feature to convert your flat data into a table that contains an aggregate value for each unique value in a column. So that will help you to like uh, structure your data in a proper way that you can at least understand and based on that you can create data set and that data set can be used in the report. So this way you can just use this uh, different set of columns, a pivot or unpivot columns. Okay. So now uh, we have a couple of uh, questions for this two, like uh, uh, the primary data preparation tool in Power BI is called what? Where we are creating this data preparation for uh, Power BI. Then the second question is the process of shaping data by converting your flat file. Uh, whatever the flat file data we have into a table that contains an aggregation value for each unique value in a column is called what? What type of column we can? Uh, what's the column name? Like, for example. And then what can be achieved by removing unnecessary rows and columns? So it's the most important thing like uh, as a data analyst, what you can achieve by removing unnecessary columns. So yeah, anyone can unmute the mic and if knows about any answer, they can. Data cleaning. Uh, uh, the answer number, first one. The yeah, first one. Uh, the primary uh, data preparation tool. We are talking about tool. Should be data flow. No. 
our query where where we are writing the query dynamic end query in which editor we are writing the query query editor power query editor yes power query editor so the answer is power query editor see for sql we have this query editor same way we have this uh, query editor for the power bi so when you are writing any query it will open that query editor in the basic mode as well as the advanced mode so all the queries will be written by any data analyst or developer in that area only okay now the second question is related to how you are shaping the data and converting your flat file uh, into a table data transformation yeah that is coming in the data transformation but i just explained that what should you do like uh, what type of what type column pivot yeah pivot column sorry pivot column right so we are doing like instead of flat using flat file we are just like creating a kind of columns which can help to understand what data is available in that and it's kind of human readable format and the third question is uh, what can be achieved by removing unnecessary rows and, and columns this is most important to understand while we are talking about uh, end user perspective right end user are not interested to see all columns and rows they are only interested what they are associated with so this is most important thing that as a data analyst or as a uh, Uh, power platform consultant or who is working with uh, power bi reports they should know like what to exclude what to add and how to represent to the end users performance uh, performance is there but most important thing is when we are importing the data i was explaining that it may happen that your source of data might have large data uh, number of rows or columns right so it will help us to reduce the data size data set size first we are not interested to pull out everything from the data set what is existing right we are interested to report create the report but with certain set of records as well as certain set of columns right so to reduce a data set size first and it is good practice to load only necessary data into your data model because we are not interested for other information which is not related to the report right so these are the uh, options we can consider yes performance is also there but eventually when we have the uh, like uh, uh, lesser uh, uh, less data in the data set then it will also uh, like increase the performance that is also a part of that but main thing is uh, we just wanted to have as minimum as required information for that report only okay now uh, uh sorry to interrupt kirti hmm. so like uh, will we be doing practical of these things or like it yes, is, yes, it yes. will be yes yes okay practical will have uh, in a while like uh, before that i just explaining you that how this data model and everything comes in in okay. the after lunch maybe uh, in that next one and half hour or one hour so i will walk you through about that uh, power bi desktop power bi services how to use the visualizations how to extract the data create the tables and publish it and share it uh, allow the scheduler and everything okay right? so we have okay. allocated like uh, one hour for that demo too thank you yeah yeah and then we go with this uh, profiling data so a uh, profiling data is a most important part as as i was mentioning that uh, it will be easy for uh, like it's basically used to studying the uh, uh, how the table is available how the data is there and determining what are the anomalies and we can also examining and developing the underlying data structure and based on that we can identify what type of data or what type of structure we are looking for right so you can see uh, these are the tables in the left navigation and we are representing the data in a way that end user can easily understand what it comes uh, when they are trying to understand this uh, information as a table 
so that we can just uh, have this profiling the data and examining the structure based on that. And now when it comes to the enhancing the data structure, how you can uh, enhance the data structure in terms of uh, uh, when we are importing the data from multiple sources as a data source in Power BI Desktop. So the data retains its predefined table and column name. So whenever we are having this information, it will retain their existing table and column name. So you might want to change some of these names so that uh, they are in a consistent format. So it may be possible that you want to change it as per our requirement. So uh, easiest way to work with uh, if you want to change it and then more meaningful to a user so user can understand that uh, specific name. And you can use Power Query Editor in Power BI Desktop, which can help you to make these name changes and simply your data structure. So there you have different set of options like you can rename the query and replace the values and everything. Here, like uh, for example, uh, we have this uh, attribute column, right? But I want to rename it or uh, sorry, I'm talking about the table. So in query one, you have this target. So I want to change the name according to my understanding. And then if you want to replace this value for attributes, you can have that replace value option available in the menu. Just so you can use that. And then uh, we have the evaluate change column data types. So uh, when you are importing uh, a uh, table from any data source, then Power BI automatically starts scanning the first thousand rows. That is the default setting. See, understand this. This is most important thing to understand, and tries to detect the type of data in the columns. Some situations might occur where Power BI Desktop does not detect the correct data type. It may happen that uh, uh, some correct data type is not understandable by Power BI. So, where incorrect data types occur, you will experience in performance issues. Like, for example, this kind of could not load the data for this visual because it is getting an error and in measure like sales quantity order ytd a column name specified in the call to function this is not a type of data but we can see that order date is in a date format right which is not supported here so this kind of issues we might have uh, uh, when we are evaluating or any kind of uh, change column in uh, data types so uh, we have to also think about that and then we talk about like combining multiple tables if we single data. So it may happen that you do not want to uh, get the reference of uh, number of tables, but you want to merge all the tables in one. Then we have this capability uh, when we are talking about uh, creating the data set. So we can also combine multiple tables into a single table. Then after we see how to design a model in Power BI. Then in that we'll see uh, how data modeling works, how to work with tables and how to create their dimension and hierarchies. So let's go with the uh, data, uh, this uh, dashboards first. So in that uh, whenever we are trying to create any uh, great data model, uh, that's uh, one of the most important tasks that a data analyst can perform in Microsoft Power BI. So as I mentioned that, Everything is dependent on how you are modeling your data. Right? Based on that, we are creating the data sets. And from that data set, we are creating the reports. Right? So this is the most important task to create or uh, having a good data model. So by doing this, uh, you help uh, uh, that make it easier for people to understand your data, which will make uh, building valuable Power BI reports easier for end users uh, to understand uh, what the data is uh, uh, telling a story about, right? So a good data model offers different set of uh, benefits. For example, uh, data exploration is faster, like you can explore in a better way. Then aggregations are simple. Reports are more accurate, so we have the more accurate reports. Then uh, reports are easier to maintain in the future. If we have the correct data model, then it is very easy for developer to uh, 
correct all those reports going forward. And then we have that star schema. So tables are mostly classified as dimension or fact tables. So uh, uh, as we, we see that creating a great model, uh, we can consider that uh, uh, you can also design a start schema uh, to simplify your data. Like it's not the only way to simplify your data, but it is a popular method. Uh, so every Power BI data analyst should understand it. Uh, in a star schema, each table within your data set is defined as a dimension or a fact table. Here you can see in this uh, uh, image, we have the dimension table as well as the fact table. So everything will be available as these two options. So star schema, uh, star schema requires modelers to classify their model date model table as either dimension or fact, right? What type of data you want to use for that? So you have to define that here. So uh, a fact table, what it contains, like it contains the dimension key columns that is related to dimension table and numeric measure columns. So those are like it's talking about the columns, like what type of columns it might have. But uh, as a data analyst, you should have this uh, knowledge, like how this star mm -hmm. schema works and it can help us to better understand the data. Right. Once we have the table, like how we can work with the tables. So you have to configure the table and columns properties. Right. So before we jump into that, uh, uh, creating the reports and uh, having some visualizations. So be sure that your model and table structure are simplified and uh, it will be easy to navigate for all the users. So when user sees fewer tables, they will enjoy using your data model considerably more. Like, for example, if we talk about uh, uh, you are importing like uh, uh, 10, 10 or 10, uh, 15 tables from many data sources, different data sources, and now the visual appears disorderly, right? In this case, you need to ensure that before you being, begin working on building the reports, your data model and table structure are simplified. So it's all, it should not be unstructured uh, way, so it will be difficult for end users to understand. So this way you have to identify that uh, tables and column properties in a way that can be easily understandable by end users. Now, uh, here uh, you can create uh, different tables uh, as per your requirement, and you can also uh, standardize some date formats based on the location like uh, or region in which uh, data and uh, which which format you want to display the data so you can use uh, that way then we have this relationship and cardinality as i was mentioning that uh, we can also create some relationships from power bi desktop as well so that will help you to understand how how to like uh, create a kind of relationship between uh, uh, more than one table where you can just connect these primary keys and get a, the data from the reference key into your uh, data set. Then we have this model challenges. So this is most important thing like uh, uh, what happens like modeling data is about establishing and maintaining relationships so that you can effectively visualize the data in the form that your business requires, right? So you can model the data in a way where your business requires that okay this visualization should be there so we can understand on uh, what type of data we are looking for let's say for example uh, uh, as a uh, as a developer we are developing reports for the sales team and we are also examining the relationships between tables so in a you like assume that we have designed poor uh, uh, data model so table one has a many to one relationship with columns in table two right so but in the same way but table two has a one to many relationship so in this case we are not maintaining the relationship between proper relationship between all tables which you are looking out for uh, to create the data set so make sure that these kind of challenges will be there as a data analyst when we are talking about how to map the data with different tables. So you should be aware like how to normalize it 
when we are trying to relations establish the relationship between more than one tables. Then uh, we have this uh, combining queries, so we can also uh, use this append and merge option. So we have the ability to combine queries, uh, uh, and that is very powerful because it allows you to append or merge different tables or queries together. So if you want to merge more than one table, then you can use that or merge want to merge more than one queries. We can also use that and you can also combine tables into a single table in uh, in different set of uh, requirement. Like for example, now the question should be in which circumstances we should use this, right? So for example, uh, too many tables exist. Right, it is very difficult to manage all the tables. So in that case, making it difficult to navigate, like if I want to navigate from one table to another table, it is very difficult for uh, me and uh, uh, managing the data model. That was well, that is one case. Second is several tables have a similar role. Third is a table has only a column or two that can fit into a different table. It may happen that one table have only one column or two column. So not necessary to use separate column, but those column can be accommodated in other other tables as well. And then you want to use several columns from different tables in a custom column. So it may be happen that uh, you want to create some custom columns, which is referencing to the other table. So in that case, we can use this combined query or uh, combine the method. Uh, like appending or uh, merging those uh, query or tables. So uh, that way you can just optimize or normalize this. Uh, all the tables columns in one column rather than using separate set of uh, tables. Then we have the dimension and uh, hierarchy. This is just for an overview like you should aware with these keywords like what are the keywords available when you are going with this uh, uh, MOC like uh, material for this examination. So then we are building a, as I mentioned that uh, earlier in that star schema where we are building the dimensions. So you will have dimension and fact table. We were having two tables, dimension and facts. So fact tables contain information about events, for example, uh, sales order and shipping dates. Who are the resellers and who are the suppliers, right? So these are be available in fact table. Now, dimension tables stores detail about business entities. For example, uh, products or time, and those are connected back to fact tables through the relationship. So we are managing two separate component. One is with uh, other information, and the, the this uh, uh, this dimension table store different information. So you can use hierarchy as one source to help you find detail in dimension table. And you can also have a kind of parent child hierarchy. For example, if you have the category uh, product and category table, then you can just establish between uh, establish a relationship between these two uh, tables where uh, a product can have uh, a single category can have multiple products available for that. So same way you have to manage for our data sets as well. Now, role. So uh, role playing dimension. So is a dimension that can filter related facts differently. So if you want to uh, filter different facts, then uh, this role playing dimension can be used. And if you want to create new hierarchy, then uh, as I mentioned in the flat file, we don't have such information, but uh, uh, you can consider a situation where you want to create a stack bar, for example, a uh, stack bar chart of total sales by category and subcategory. So here you can see uh, we have two charts, one for the category and one for the subcategory name. So you can accomplish this task by creating a hierarchy in product, whatever the table you are referring to render this chart or uh, connecting as a data source or entity for categories and subcategories. So you have to make sure that uh, you are connecting the correct uh, table. Then uh, we have this uh, 
another point for creating model calculations using DEX in Power BI. As in the beginning, I was mentioning that uh, using this DEX, uh, you can create, uh, build, uh, you can build measures and calculated columns. Then you can also understand the context in relation to DEX measure, uh, time intelligent function, everything. So you will be able to see that how uh, uh, DAX can be used and what are the different contexts available. So basically this will be used to uh, like how you can use the ex expressions. Like if you know about any programming language, then uh, we have the condition if A is not equal to zero, then what needs to be done? Else this needs to be done, right? Same way we, we can write the line of code in uh, Power BI as well. So for that, we have to use DEX. So what is the full name of DEX? That is Data Analysis Expressions. That is a programming language. This is important when you are uh, trying to write something like uh, on the fly, it should be displayed. So for example, I have one column uh, called uh, it's a kind of Boolean column, like I'm selecting something. If it is yes, then it displays yes. If it is no, then I have to write kind of no dash. Why it is no? Why I have not selected yes? So we have to concat this value, right? So we have to check the condition. If this column contains value equal to no, then I have to concat with other column. So in that case, you can use this kind of uh, DAX expression. So this programming language is used throughout Microsoft Power BI for creating calculated columns, measures and custom tables. It is a collection of functions like we can use func we can use functions, for example, concat then uh, uh, date time, add days. Then uh, uh, multiplication kind of split. So all the functions can be used. Then we can also use operators like equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, and constants. That can be used in formula or expression. We have to write a formula or expression. Or uh, uh, we can also use DEX to solve a number of calculations and data analysis problem, which can help us to create new information from data that is already in your model. So it may happen that we have a couple of columns in a table, uh, but we want to manipulate those two columns and want to display something readable uh, to the end user. So we can use this kind of expressions for that. And uh, uh, you can also uh, use different calculation techniques and functions uh, which can create measures or calculated columns and uh, that will definitely help you to uh, achieve what you're looking for. So uh, basically uh, that is used for those functions and using that. And then measure. So measures are a summarization of data. So if you want to uh, create something as a summarize summary for the data, then you can use create the measure. So that option is available when uh, we are uh, talking about some visualization. So you just have to create, select that visual measure from the visualization and have to pass on which data you want to create that measure. So that is that. And then we have the calculated columns, like uh, as I once was mentioning that uh, if you want to display something uh, by combining uh, two or more columns, then we can use the calculated columns. So here you can see uh, in this uh, expression, I am writing column equal to, and then whatever the combination of columns I want, like sales order details, where I want to use quantity, multiplication, sales order details, unit price. So that will be available in my total price. So those are the uh, two different columns for me, but I want to create one custom column that is total price and it will have this multiplication of two columns and that column is behaving as a calculated column though we don't have that column in the uh, actual data table you can see in the data table we have four columns but in the result we have total five columns where total price is a kind of 
custom column which we have created using this calc uh, which we have created as a calculated columns. So sometimes it requires that you have to deal with this kind of uh, uh, information that the column is not available, but you can just manipulate existing column and create your custom columns. So that comes for that calculated columns. And then we have this uh, real time dashboard. So once we have this data and how you can use uh, the dashboard with different set of data where uh, you have created tax or uh, any measures or anything so that we can uh, use that uh, uh, in that uh, dashboard by implementing such information like for example uh, if you want to have that calculated function then we can just have that column total sales for 2015 then you can use calculate function sum function year function and then this consider as a expression and uh, it will filter the result what you have assigned for this uh, tab uh, table columns so that way you can also use this column names and everything okay. so this is all about that and yeah i have a couple of questions for this session as well section as well so which dex function evaluates an expression in a modified filter context right calculate yeah. yeah calculate correct so that way you can just uh, have like a, you can have kind of uh, anything which you want but it would be a kind of filter for from existing data and the second is uh, why would you want to override the default context specific criteria uh, criteria is yes criteria is there but we have to create a measure like measure is kind of summarization of the data like i do not want the existing context but i want to use it and override it by creating the measure where i want some data which is related to that column only regardless of what the user selects right i am just pulling out some information from uh, the column and I'm just displaying as a summary of that uh, in the measure. So you can create the measure that is behaving like uh, uh, whatever the intention you are trying to uh, collect the data and displaying for the users. Then, uh, then after we have this, how you can optimize the model performance. Now, most of the time what happens like uh, if you have more data like performance optimization is like a, a main pain point for any data analyst or any organization when they are talking about uh, uh, this uh, how to how to handle it how to how to normalize the data right so uh, this is also known as performance tuning sometimes we are uh, discussing with the uh, within the team okay but we have to do something for the performance tuning or optimization so both are same right so this involves making changes to the current state of the data model so that it runs more efficiently or essentially uh, when your data model is optimized the performance is better so as earlier i mentioned that most of or we can say heart of this application is uh, heart of the report is data model how we are converting your data model how we are using your data model how we are creating it and how we are transforming that that can be used in for your reports all depends on the data model design so make sure that you are designing your data model in a way that it can enhance the performance and uh, optimize that solution as well so sometimes you might find that your report runs well in test sometimes this happens right so everything is working fine in fine in test and development environment but but what happens when deployed to the production or broader consumption where we have that large set of data performance issues where we have this actual performance issues uh, arise so from a report user's perspective poor performance is characterized by report pages that take longer to load and visualization taking more time to update so there will be two factor one 
if your report is having more than one page, it takes a lot of time to load that page. Second, in your report, you have used the visualization. So it may be possible that visualization is taking some time to load actual data. So the poor performance results in a negative user experience. So user will complain, OK, the report is there, but it is taking some time to load all the pages as well as the images or visualizations, whatever we have used. So as a data analyst, we have to spend approximately, I would say 70 to 80 percent of your time working with your data. Like 80 20 ratio, you can consider 80 20 ratio. That will help you to. Uh, like design a proper uh, data model which can. Avoid this negative performance issues while actual users are accessing, right? So a smaller size data model uses less resources because we have lesser number of records, so it is using less resources, for example, memory. So it is not taking that much of memory when we are trying to communicate with that data. And we are achieving that data set in a faster way. Right, so. You have to pick in mind that. Uh, uh, while you are uh, talking about this performance optimization for the data, like ensuring that the data, the, the correct data types are used, whatever the data source we are using. Then deleting unnecessary columns and rows, which is not required for the report. Third point is you can avoid repeated values, duplications. Then you can also replacing numeric columns with measures if required. Then uh, you can also uh, summarize the data wherever it is possible. Like you can create the measure uh, wherever possible rather than using the actual uh, columns. So that way you can just uh, uh, have a kind of uh, better performance or uh, optimize or fine tune the performance for all the reports. And then as I was mentioning that. Uh, uh, how you can uh, avoid this kind of performance and troubleshooting if you want to improve. So there are two options. You can use variables or you can write a calculus uh, this expression without variables. So all depends like how you want to go with. Right. So whenever we are using variables that will always improve performance because we are storing something into variable. We are not directly uh, 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 dealing with that. Uh, component so you can use any approach uh, which is relevant to uh, enhance the performance tuning for your reports. Then again, we have this performance analyzer where as earlier we seen that uh, uh, we want to diagnose the query or something like that. We have that option available in the tools. So same way we have the performance analyzer option available for uh, this Power BI. So in Power BI desktop, we have that option available like how uh, each report element is performing, like how the measures are working and uh, what is the issue when we are talking about this uh, uh, data model, like for example. So data model has, uh, it may happen that we our data model have multiple tables and all the tables have complex relationships. So in that case, the poor performance of a report leads to a negative user experience, as I mentioned. So here uh, we can identify report performance bottlenecks uh, by using this performance analyzer and also analyze that. Uh, uh, how the report elements are performing when user interact with them. So in report elements, we have used different set of. Uh, uh, visualization controls, so it may happen that something is not loading properly, so we can identify what is happening when end user is trying to access that. And then we can also uh, review performance results like uh, uh, using that performance analyzer pen. Here we have that analyzer and here you can see that uh, duration is also available, like if I'm accessing the card, it is taking 1913 milliseconds. So you will be able to see like how how much time it is taking to load that data, right? So uh, that's one option uh, that can be available from uh, reviewing all the performance results sets. 
then uh, you have the analyze query plan so you can also uh, like identify how my query will look like when uh, you are running as a test uh, query and you can see that uh, here we have the 2754 for sales by uh, year uh, i'm using this query and after uh, analyzing that i will have 54 right so that way you can uh, analyze query plans and enhance the performance and for reduce the cardinality i think uh, uh, it's a term that is used to describe the uniqueness of the value in a column so it depends like how you want to display the the results as like for example here in say uh, in this uh, image you can see your employee id m01 m02 m03 m04 those are these uh, column distribution where uh, uh, it display the context of the relationship between two tables where it describe the direction of uh, relationship so from here you can also enhance that uh, cardinality issues or reduce the cardinality and uh, uh, display your data in a better way then we have this implement table granularity so it's the lowest level that data can be in set of data so you can also change that uh, uh, when you are talking about uh, granularity and it details uh, that is represented within your data uh, meaning that data more granular uh, of your data whatever the data you have entered uh, uh, rendering to the users and it is an important topic for all data analysts regardless of the power bi tools that you are using so we have to define the correct data granularity and that can have a big impact on the performance and the usability of your power bi reports and results we are using to uh, display those data in a, in a readable uh, manner for the end users so you can think about this as well and then right here you can see uh, in this diagram uh, we have this uh, table granularity where we have one too many and one too many relationship between calendar and uh, sales budget table so that way you can like create whatever the possible best possible way for you to enhance the performance and then we have this optimized direct query model as earlier we discussed like uh, you can uh, directly query to your data source so in that case we also have to optimize the query model so how we can do that so direct query as i mentioned that direct query is one way to get data into power bi desktop and this method involves connecting directly to your data in its source repository whatever the source repository we are using it will try to directly connect with that let's say for example in this uh, image i am trying to connect with my sql server database and where I'm selecting the option direct query rather than selecting the import. So when we are using this direct query method, the overall user experience depends heavily on the performance of this underlying data source, which data source we are trying to connect, right? So slow query response times will lead to a negative user experience. Let's say, for example, if you are writing this uh, connecting SQL with direct query, but your query response times taking long time, then it will eventually be a kind of negative user experience. And in the worst case scenarios, queries might time out. So it may happen that uh, you are uh, fetching the large set of data, and then it comes that okay, timed out for this query. So what happens, right? So uh, the number of users who are opening the reports at any one time will impact the load that is placed on the data source. So let's say, for example, five users are accessing with different uh, filter criteria, then it will try to hit five queries into this data source. So uh, for example, uh, uh, let's say our report is having uh, 10 or 15 visuals like 15 uh, components with chart map or anything and five or ten people are using this report so for 10 visuals five users it will get 50 queries 
like multiply by uh, whatever they, the visuals multiply number of users. So it will try to execute that number of queries or more will exist on the data source because each visual will issue one or more queries. It may happen that one visual will uh, combine the data from two uh, columns. So that will uh, like uh, decreased or uh, performance will not be uh, up to the mark for end users. So unfortunately, the performance of your Power BI model will not only be impacted by the performance of the underlying data source, but also by other uncontrollable factors. So what are the uncontrollable factors? The first one we I think we already discussed on that was network latency. Right, so if we have this network fluctuation or uh, faster networks return data quicker, but we if we have the issues with the network connection, then that will be a kind of issue. Then second is the performance of the data source server. And how many other workloads are on the server? For example, uh, you can you can consider the implications of a server refresh taking uh, taking place while hundreds of people are using the same server for different reason. I am using the same this physical server for querying the data uh, into SQL server, but someone is using for uh, accessing any folder or file, right? So the resource will be occupied for this physical physical server. So that also comes into the picture when we are talking about this uh, direct query to any data source. So using direct query poses a risk to the quality of your model's performance. And to optimize performance in this situation, you need to have a control over or access to the source database. Right, so make sure that whenever you are suggesting uh, to use direct query, keep in mind this all these options, pros and cons. So uh, that will help you to understand. So I have already uh, tried to cover that. Uh, what are the implications of using direct query? So first, first talk about the benefits. So whenever you are uh, like uh, uh, getting the data uh, or like available uh, all the updated data wherever the data changes you will have that data right and near real time reporting is needed whenever you are trying to use up to date data you can use with uh, direct query and it also supports large data volumes and supports multiple dimension data right? and it is a bit bit best practice to import data into power bi desktop but your organization might need to use direct query uh, data connectivity mode as earlier uh, we discussed about those options. So if your organi organization needs to use direct query, you should clearly understand its behavior within Power BI desktop and be aware of its limitation, right? So you should be aware with benefits as well as the limitations. So when you initially use the get data feature in the Power BI desktop, we are selecting the data source and uh, uh, let's say for example if uh, we are trying to connect a relational source we can select a set of tables we are not selecting everything but we have an option to select specific table which we are going to use in our report to pull out the data so that's one option we can go with and uh, when we are loading the data no data is imported into the power bi desktop only the schema is loaded so that that is another option and if we talk about the limitations so obviously performance depends on the underlying data source as i mentioned that what data source we are trying to connect if it is sql server then we have to talk, think about the network latency then uh, the resource availability on that server and then we have the security so we have to also understand how the data moves between source and destination. Do we have any restriction to connect with that data source or after connecting, we are not able to read the data, copy the data, anything. And then we have this modeling. Uh, some modeling capabilities are limited, which is not supported uh, for that specific data model. And then we have the transformation. So some data transformation techniques are limited for certain data sources. So we also have to think about that uh, uh, perspective uh, points 
uh, when we are talking about pulling out the data and optimizing the query. Right? And then uh, we have some uh, options to optimize this uh, performance like uh, in the query reduction. So you can examine this query that uh, are being sent to the underlying source and uh, which is trying to identify the reasons uh, for the poor query performance. So you can also uh, uh, make changes in Power BI desktop and uh, we can uh, have this data source to optimize overall performance. So we have three options here. Uh, first, we can consider that optimized data in Power BI desktop. So within the Power BI desktop, we can optimize the data. So when we have that optimized data source as much as possible, we can take further actions within Power BI desktop, like you can use uh, performance analyzer, then uh, uh, we can use this query reduction, anything. But once we have the data, then we can uh, go with this. So this is all about that performance optimization. And now how you can create the reports, right? So you have to design a report. There are two options. One, design report and extend that report. So for designing a report, we have the visualist. So I was talking about that visualization, like what is visualization? What type of visualization will be uh, having for uh, generating any reports? So Power BI visuals are attractive charts and graphics that you can use to revitalize your data, right? Once we have the data, now it, it depends on which format or which uh, user interface you want or which type of visual you want to be uh, available for end user that can be uh, understandable uh, very easily with the data, right? So visuals allow you to share data insights more effectively and that will also increase comprehension, retention, and appeal. Like instead of reading the number, it is better to display that number with the visual impact. So that will uh, uh, suffice your requirement, and uh, user will also be able to understand that okay, uh, these are the data, and I have to take that action based on whatever the user interface is available for me. Just if it is uh, kind of red uh, color, then that decision needs to be taken immediately so you can have that data rendering in a better way. And uh, visuals are a fundamental part of or your report because they will help uh, your report audience connect and interact with the information to make informed decision quickly. So when we, we will see after this lunch break uh, how to create, uh, I will uh, have that one hour for demo only. So I will explain everything about how, what are the different visuals available, how it will make uh, a more appealing interface for end users. And from there, they can view the information in a way which they can understand rather than reading this line of code, right? And after you have loaded and modeled your organization's data in Power BI desktop, you will be ready to start creating your reports. So before creating the reports, our data model should be there. Either it could be kind of optimized one, whatever. Uh, the data model should be there. And once it is there, then uh, we will create the report. We will use different uh, visuals available in that uh, uh, Power BI desktop. And we can just connect whatever the field we are looking for as a report. So here you can see I have just created a couple of screenshots for the reports. So once we have the uh, reports, uh, we are creating the Power BI desktop. It will likely depend on the business requirement. So all the business requirements are different and you have to think about how to represent the data using different visuals. So here you can see in this design report layout, uh, I have uh, just explained the tiles. In the tiles, we are just displaying the numbers in terms of uh, net sales, cost of sales, right? So, and then we are just uh, displaying these uh, charts and stack charts and some other information. And then this is a different set of visualization with the same tab, same information, but the visualization is different like, like this, right? Now it all depends like 
what type of visualization will impact more or it will be uh, easily understandable by user when they are uh, looking into that uh, uh, user interface rather than uh, looking into the numbers, right? So uh, that way you have to identify which inter visual is best suitable candidate for displaying such data. Okay. So I will show you that uh, in that later part. Yeah, and then uh, we can this. I will explain this formatting and basic everything in this uh, demo. Now let me jump into the create dashboard. So once you are having all the reports available with you with uh, all this different set of visuals, then we have to create the dashboard. So dashboard is a kind of. Uh, uh, single page you can consider is a single page which can give you overall idea of whatever the report you are looking for and uh, that is also called a canvas so you come to know about this terminology uh, dashboard as well as a canvas so that tells a story through visualizations right here you can understand what is like uh, opportunities scores then opportunity count then uh, opportunity count is 487 and then you can filter out okay this is the category this is uh, revenue for about two two billion dollar so this visualization can give you an idea because it's limited to one page only. And it is well built dashboard capture the main most important highlights of the story that you are trying to tell. And readers can review related reports for the details, right? So here you can see we have like 10 or 12 component uh, as an important part of the dashboard, but as an end user, I can also drill down all these components as per my requirement. But this is a kind of landing page for them to uh, analyze more reports. And when would you uh, want to build a dashboard versus report? So the question should be in your mind, like when should we go with the dashboard and when should we go with the reports, right? So there are uh, a few key similarities and differences uh, worth noting when you are determining the right path for uh, this development. So dashboards can be created from multiple data sets or reports. Right, so understand this difference. You can create dashboard when you have to deal with multiple data sets or reports. And dashboards do not have the filter visualizations and field spin uh, that are in Power BI desktop. So we in Power BI desktop, we have that capability, but in dash, dashboard, we don't have that. So it means that you cannot add new filters and slicers and you cannot make edits, right? So dashboard is a kind of view only part for uh, us. So we cannot make any changes on that. And dashboards can only be a single page. It will be only single page, always remain a single page. We cannot have multiple page for dashboards, but for reports, we may have more than one page. So, and you cannot see the underlying data set directly in a dashboard, while you can see the data set in a report. In, in, in dashboard, in this screen, I don't see any data set, right? I don't understand what data set has been used, but in uh, report, under the data, we can see that what uh, data set has been used. So both data sets, oh, sorry, data uh, dashboards and the reports can be refreshed to show the latest data. So that's benefit like we can see uh, the real time data once we refresh that. Now you can see here uh, we have used the tiles uh, in the top left corner and top right corner. In the first row I can say we have used tiles. So uh, those are the individual report elements or we can say it's a snapshot of your data that are then pinned to a dashboard. And you can also pin that. So in, the, in short, like uh, uh, you can go with the dashboard, but you have to identify in which case you would go with the dashboard and uh, for which functionality you can go with the reports. And then uh, we have this uh, theme, so we are not taking that is OK. We'll, we'll see that later. And yeah, real time dashboard. OK, so sometimes what happens like uh, uh, 
here we are just talking about for this dashboard, let's say assume we are talking about the data which is coming from some a data source like Excel or SQL Server or any uh, OneDrive for business or any SharePoint site. But what if we want to have this real time dashboard? So there we have to uh, uh, deal with IoT Hub or Azure Stream Analytics and then we can uh, consume the data in Power BI report. So in this data centric world, nowadays everything is uh, depend on data. It has become increasingly important for uh, uh, anyone to have the ability to view how data changes in real time, right? So this ability is particularly important in the context of dashboards. And these are the canvases on which you can tell the story of the data. So the ability to show real time information or uh, streaming the data on this dashboard, which can be important for all your business how you are representing the data, how you are getting the data. And with Power BI's real time streaming capabilities, you can stream data and update dashboard as soon as the data is logged. So whenever the data is logged, you can update the data and Power BI report will be reflected accordingly. So here we have to think about streaming the data. Then streaming data can come from a variety of sources. So for that, we have different set of data source which includes, for example, uh, it could be any social media, factory sensors, service usage metrics, and other sources that may contain a constant stream of data point, which we need to connect with them. And then a common scenario, uh, for example, are sensors, right? Sensors always uh, send a stream of uh, telemetry data to IoT hub. And then from the IoT hub, we can use that stream inside uh, uh, inside job to aggregate the data. Then you can in, uh, retrieve the data into Power BI as a streaming data set where you can consume the information and build the potential uh, visuals, like uh, what type of visual we want to implement. So whatever the data comes from a streaming data set is not stored in Power BI data model. Uh, keep in mind, instead it is stored in a temporary cache because in this case, all the data is coming through the sensor and it comes frequently. So consequently, you cannot model the data with this type of data set because we are not storing anywhere. We are just caching the data. So the only way to visualize the data from a streaming data source is to create a type directly on dashboard and use a custom streaming data source. We cannot create kind of visualization with chart or anything. We can just create the type. So after you select that new data set, then uh, we can just use uh, a details of streaming data set, same like whatever the data set we are using for other visuals. And then we can uh, add new streaming data set tile. And uh, it can be, this tile can be in the form of any line chart, stack bar chart, or cars, or any kind of format we want to use for that. But make sure that you are using the time, not other controls. Right. So this is most important part for this. Uh, how you can uh, deal with the real time uh, data for dashboard. And this is for pin. We'll see that later. And then we have this identify patterns. Okay. So this is also a kind of uh, important thing when we are talking about uh, uh, analytics. Like once you have the data, then how you will be able to analyze the data? So in this, you can see that uh, uh, just understand that advanced analytics will help you to or help your uh, organizations to make better business decisions and create action, actionable and meaningful insights. If you have some data, you are just analyzing it and then you are taking some decision based on that. And the emerging power of advanced analytics always uh, brings some value to organization uh, through Power BI advanced analytics capabilities. So there are a lot of options available when uh, you are trying to identify something uh, from the data which we have that uh, uh, available as a data source. For example, in uh, Outlier is a type of anomaly in your data, for example, and something that you did not expect or that surprised you based on the historical averages or results 
So you want to find what is happening, what is wrong, and based on that, you will analyze something, right? So for example, uh, you are analyzing data for a shipping warehouse, and where you notice that the number of orders <clears throat> spiked up above average for a specific product category. So you can see here in this key gear that a spike is there for a specific product category. So you just wanted to analyze that, uh, identify which product category it is and ask question about the outlier, outliers, right? Was there above average? So you are anticipating something like, okay, for this product, we are anticipating this much of uh, uh, growth or sales, but it is more than that. So you have to analyze that. So Power BI allows you to easily identify outliers in your data, but you need to first determine the logic behind what constitutes an outlier. First, you have to identify the logic. Then you can use trigger points such as, for example, calculations uh, around what you would consider the outline outlier to be. So you have to kind of uh, be ready with the uh, logic or algorithm that can notify you when this goes up to whatever the anticipated amount you are looking for. And this process of identifying outliers involves uh, segmenting. You have to segment your data in two groups. One group is the outlier data and the other group is not. So you have to identify those two groups and then uh, you can drill down into outliers just to uh, whatever, like you can use visualizations or you can use text command uh, where you can just uh, find something with the measures and uh, identify the root cause. Right, then uh, you have this analyze uh, feature. So we have that analyze feature. If you right click on any product, uh, any visualize, then you will be able to see analyze option and uh, see find uh, where this distribution is different. So once you click on that, you will be able to see. So this feature provides you with additional analysis that is generated by Power BI. We are not doing anything, but this is generated by Power BI for selected data point. So in this case, this is our data point and created by Power BI. We have not defined this menu, right? It is coming out of the box. So you, you might want to use this feature to see if Power BI has found something that you have not looked at before. It may happen that we missed out something while uh, modeling the data or it is not uh, uh, like we have not observed or visualized that, but Power BI is very smart and it gives you the hint to uh, review that. So uh, that will also help you to uh, uh, exploring, like instead of uh, exploring the data manually, we can use this analyze feature and uh, get a fast automated insightful analysis on our data. So that is what is wrong. We can at least identify from this analyze uh, options. So that is also available in the visualization when we uh, uh, review that. Then custom visuals. So in addition to the out of the box visualizations, you see in Power BI desktop, uh, we have the custom visuals available. So as I was talking about the uh, custom apps we can add. So we have number of uh, apps available from uh, that can be accessed from Microsoft App Source. And uh, we have the library of custom visuals which can be added into your uh, uh, chart or dash, sorry, in reports or dashboard. So here you can see in three dots, once we click on three dots, then this Power BI Visual App Source will be open. And from there you can use or uh, access or download free as well as the a paid version of those controls in your Power BI desktop. We'll see once uh, we jump into that demo section. And then uh, grouping and uh, binning. So uh, this is also important part like uh, when you are creating visuals, uh, Power BI desktop uh, aggregates your data into groups based on the values, uh, how it finds in the underlying data. And you can also refine how those default groups are presented, right? So group data points to help view. It will help you to view, analyze, and explore data more clearly. If we have the group data, then it will be easy for us to like analyze uh, in a better way. So 
most important thing is why we are doing grouping. So grouping is used for categorize of uh, uh, for categorize of data and binning is similar to grouping, but it is used for grouping continuous fields such as for example numbers and dates, right? If we have the numbers and dates, then we go with the binning. Otherwise we go with the grouping. So you can use the grouping and binning features to ensure now we should have a question when to use it, right? So you can use these both the features to ensure the visualize uh, visuals in your reports display your data exactly how you want them to. Right, it, it display how you want the data should be presented for end users, then you can use it. So you can more clearly view, analyze and explore the data and trends in your visuals. Based on that, you will be able to identify uh, the trends and everything. And you will be uh, able to identify clusters, patterns of behavior, then data average, and a lot of things can be like uh, uh, identified based on that grouping and binning. So all depends how you want to represent the data for end users. Okay. And then we have this uh, clustering technique. So this, this allows you to identify a segment of data that is very similar to each other, uh, but very this this similar to the rest of the data, right? You can see here in this uh, left uh, bottom, we have like uh, a lot of data, but if you go to that uh, far away right side, that the data will be lesser than this kind of. So you can identify the different clusters uh, for this. Right, so, and then we have this uh, AI visuals. So if you want to use some kind of uh, uh, Power BI thing, then uh, you can also use that. Uh, different set of analyzing the data and uh, fastest way to get an answer using AI. So uh, let's say, for example, uh, question and answer feature, right? So we have that options available. If you ask some question, it will come up with the self help uh, and give us the response like uh, uh, how you are trying to get the answer. So you can explore data in your own words, right? You just type in something, okay, uh, sales data, then it will come with the answer. Okay, you are looking out for this and it asks natural, natural language questions. For example, a self help feature for insights the user is interested in, like I'm typing sales, then it will come up with some uh, uh, answers like, okay, are you looking out for this? Are you looking out for this sales report, sales data kind of? So that help you to uh, understand that uh, how how uh, this AI feature, AI visuals can be used uh, if you are looking out for any kind of information in a way. Right? And then uh, we have the insights, so AI insights. So here you can see in that uh, option, uh, we have add column options and in text analytics, then vision, then Azure machine learning, so all these are coming with the AI insights. So uh, artificial intelligence, if you want to use uh, that into the system, then we have that capability using this AI insights, insights. And we can connect all collection of pre-trained machine learning models. So we should have this uh, trained machine learning options available. So uh, this feature allows you to connect with uh, pre-trained machine learning models that you can apply to your data whatever the data we have, and we can enhance the data preparation efforts, right? For example, AI Insights is uh, accessed in the Power Query Editor, so we have to use the Power Query Editor from where we can uh, access this. And with this, we have this uh, different options, for example, text analytics. So uh, text analytics and vision, right? Uh, in Power BI, so you can apply different algorithms from Azure Cognitive Services to enrich your data in Power Query, right? And the services that are supported today are, for example, sentiment analysis, e-phrase extraction, language detection, image tagging, for example. Uh, let's assume text analytics. So you are trying to get some data from uh, any any column where I have added my comments. Now I want to analyze what is my sentiment when I was typing this comment in that field. So I have added like uh, data. Okay, 
uh, when is your next online event, for example? Right now, I do not find any like rude wordings or any uh, any bad language in this sentence. So this text analytics way uh, pull this uh, column value and try to analyze what are the sentiment of the user when they are writing this line of uh, uh, sentence, right? So based on that, we can identify, OK. Uh, this is a good uh, feedback or bad feedback, whatever the uh, analysis we want to do based on those comments. So that can be done using this text analytics. So this is how this uh, uh, AI uh, modeling will work. Also same way we can also use this vision uh, part as well. And uh, uh, for example, if you are uploading some image, then you are you want to tag some objects in image. Let's say uh, background should be white for that image, so you can just tag that uh, in that reason uh, part of that. And then our system, our report will identify okay what this object is about and what are the AI uh, uh, insights we are getting using this different components, either text analytics or a vision anal uh, vision, not analytics, but these are the options. So, uh, yeah, and and most important thing is, this is coming under the premium capacity. It is not coming out of the box. So, if you want to go with this uh, uh, this text analytics and vision options, then we should go with the premium capacity for Power BI reports. So, there are two options. Uh, I'll I'll show you. Uh, like each and every subscription have some limitations. Like if you go with the free version, you have certain set of functionalities available for that. But if you go with the premium one, then you will have the full and uh, full uh, functionality of whatever the component we are looking for. So same way we have these limitations for uh, uh, this uh, text analytics and vision options. If you go, if you want to go with that, then uh, you should have that premium capacity. Uh, uh, required for that Power BI reports. Yeah, so I think I'm almost done with all the theoretical concepts uh, we have designed for uh, this uh, session today. Now let me address if we have any questions uh, before we uh, go for lunch break and then we will start our uh, interface from where I will explain this Power BI desktop and this uh, Power BI service and from work, workspace, how to create the data set, replace it, uh, uh, publish it, share it with other users. So we'll we'll cover that after lunch break uh, with the full demo session as well as a question and answer addressing in that. Is this facility available in Power BI? Which has uh, NIOS? This facility you are talking about this AI builder. So as no, that is not available in that. Uh, I'll, I'll explain you that when we come to that uh, uh, premium one. So here we don't have that premium. If you go to the workspace, uh, whatever the workspace you have, you will have the diamonds diamonds uh, icon. So that is a premium one and based on that you will be able to see uh, all the possible options available to access that text analytics and uh, uh, vision for AI. So here I don't see we have that for me at least I don't have that, but yeah, you can go with the premium one. If in organization you have that, you can just analyze that. And any other question?
Yeah, granularity is a kind of feature uh, which can be available when we are talking about how you want to model your data and how you want to represent the data. So those options are available when you are exploring more in that. But yeah, I'll try to try. I'll try to cover as much as I can in the next session uh, in hour or so, like explaining how to uh, uh, model the data by creating some uh, uh, dummy data as well as I already created a couple of samples for you just to explain uh, how to deal with the visuals, how to create the tables, pull out the fields and publish those into uh, Power BI services uh, in workspace and then you can share it with other users. So yeah. Yeah, Chaitali, so we can connect at 2.30 and then uh, uh, we'll have that uh, session with the demo only. And yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So guys, uh, we will go on lunch break for one hour. So we'll continue again the session by 2.30. Also, I have shared the MOC code with you all on your register mail IDs. So do check. Follow the steps mentioned in the mail body and redeem to get the access to PL300 study material. The code has been mentioned in the mail body so do follow the steps and redeem the code to get access to the pl300 study material thank you